Now we're out to $3.80, and the way things are trending here may have, in fact, start longer than that, of course. The Gay Waterhouse and Adrian Bott stay, but looking for a race-to-race double here. Now a $3.80 chance race favourite to Didi. Well back in the field as they come towards the bend is uh, Elderberry, second last with the Sonic Boom, and Celestial Storm in front of those as they turn with Tabata Set. Exploring three out. In the centre is Ode to Joy, and back on the fence is Aditi. A length and a half away back in, or Feroshi, I should say, in between the two leaders. Two lengths away, then came Zasuko to Sonic Boom and Sensical trying to run on. It's Feroshi on the outside exploring. Feroshi exploring. Here comes Sensical and Zasuko starting to storm to Sonic Boom. The Sonic Boom went boom to Sonic Boom from second last. A big win as raced home to win. Second prize will go to Zasuko. Third will be Sensical and Huge win on debut. Blake Shin times it perfectly to Sonic Boom, the Philly by Spirit of Boom, which cost $300,000 at the English Premier Yearling Sale, has made some the Colts. Length slower than the boys. So, uh, yeah, take from that what you will. Look, tie on for the first time. First up, last preparation. It won the McNeil, a group three at Caulfield over the 1,200, beating a smart one in Afkid. So, uh, they will have to pull out a beauty. They round the bend. The front runner on the inside is Mary McBoy. Gets away from the fence as they flatten at the 500. Maximilius cruises up to him. Two lengths away, Royal Merchant. Then came Jack and O. Bankmore starting to put in the lengthy ones. And then further back to Reffless Dame. It's Maximilius hitting the front. Uh, Royal Merchant on the outside running a cheeky race with Bankmore. Uh, Jack and O back to the inside. Ruthless Dame coming on now. It's Bankmore moving up on the outside of Royal Merchant. Ruthless Dame is Lying on the outside, Jackano. Jackano flew up on the fence and got the money. Jackano a nose on the line to Bankmore and Ruthless Dame. Possibly that order in a three-way cliffhanger. Well, Merchant close up from... He knows where the line is. He is such an impressive colt. And he will get up in the shadows of the post. Damien Lane burst him through the gap. He accelerated away and got there. Defeated Bankmore, who ran some... Yes. Oh, it was an exciting finish to what was uh, a fantastic race. Jack and O, what a turn of foot he's got. All days in New Zealand. <laughs> Something he's good at is uh, knocking people around, but uh, he's a playful bugger. He's, uh, he's safe, though. Good boy. So runners are in the yard for our feature race, the Fujitsu General Eskimo Prince Stakes over 20. Early of the field, Capital Queen just shows the way. From Toronomic at the outside, Aft Cabin goes to third on the outside of Zoo Tiger. Then Williamsburg from Communist, Brosnan, Sajardin, Ossipenko's on a wide path at the 600 metres. Capital Queen really being eyeballed here by Toronomica. A length and a half to the favourite aft cabin on the outside of Zoo Tiger. Marquand already getting itchy fingers on Zoo Tiger as they straighten up. Toronomica races to a narrow lead now from Capital Queen. Aft cabin is still cruising in third, followed by Communist Williamsburg. Zoo Tiger under a very vigorous ride looking for clear running. McDonald said go now on aft cabin. And the favourite races two lengths clear. Zoo Tiger goes to second. Then came Communist, but it's a great return to racing for aft cabin. A big winner. Zoo Tiger second. Communist third in front of Brosnan. Osipenko next, followed in by uh, Torrent. That was arrogant. That was a dominant win. He's back and back in a big way. We know this. Oh, class with a capital C. The way he accelerated and owned, he owned the race. The whole way he owned it and he flattened out and... Uh, it's a beautiful trophy and it has that. It's about sustained speed. The Black Caviar Lightning Stakes. Thousand. Money come for Nature Strip. $1.95 and 90% of the hold now here at Points Bet with that runner. Of the other 10%, well, Cool and Gatters had some friends, albeit 650 out to 750 on race day. Buenos Notches there. Stannis Notches, ball of fire, and I wish I win as last. So Marabi is the leader. 700 metres to go from Nature Strip. September runs nice and close, and Cool and Gatter wider on the track. A length and a half, Bella Nipatina Malane, followed by Fire Buenos Notches, baller. I wish I win as last in the Lightning. 450 metres to go. Nature Strip drives up on the inside to match Marabi. They're a length and a half September run. Cool and Gatter. Then came Bella Nipatina and further back in the field, Belaine. It's Nature Strip trying to kick. Cool and Gatter's getting close and September run back on the inside of the 150. September run drives through and Cool and Gatter then Bella Nipatina. Cool and Gatter in the centre lifts. Cool and Gatter in front of Bella Nipatina. I wish I win late. Cool and Gatter announces herself and wins it from I wish 
Hope in Valadipatina, September run. Then Buena Noches. Next, Nature Strip, Bola, Marabi. But let's concentrate on this new little princess who became a queen today. Her name is Coolangatta. That was some win. She's still emerging horse court. I wish I win. I mean, bring on the new market for him. He's won a Golden Eagle. There's a real X factor about him. And Coolangatta. She was. And what about the record of three-year-old fillies in the Lightning? She's had to defy that, hasn't she? And uh, she's done it so well. It's not an easy thing to do, but she... ...dating at Melbourne at the moment, so Steel City. Is your rock-solid favourite here, $4.80, but we're holding more money on Barber. These two went up five. Someone's opened the door on your earlier favourite today at uh, 9 a.m., that four forty out to $6. It'll bros. The field is now set for the late Rokes Blue Diamond Stakes. Car. Next in the field, Don Tawley owned a sonic boom, and then well back in the field is Barber at this stage, three wide, and VC is four wide around him as they're about to charge down the hill at the 750. Two lengths away, Brave Halo, and then came Sensical Dubonenko, and at the tail of the field is Picky. So the instructor is the leader. 600 metres to go, led by a neck exploring. Then came Steel City, third on the inside of Extreme Threat. Further back, Zolt for Car and Party for two from Little Bros. VC. Brave Halo goes via the Cape and then came Barber back behind the mark and saw Kid Don Corleone, Dubinenko and Sensical. It's the instructor with Exploring moving up on the outside but Steel City's trying for run on the inner and got chopped out. Then Extreme Threat back behind them, Little Bros. Then Brave Halo, Zolfa Car, Don Corleone, the instructor with 150 to go grabbed by Little Bros. Little Bros takes the lead from Arkansas, Kid Don Corleone, Little Bros. It's Hayes again. Little Bros, three quarters of a leg. Second, Don Corleone from Arkansas, Kid or Brave Heel, a Halo and then came Dubonenko. Next to finish Extreme Threat Barber, Zolfakar. And then came Party for Two. Next Picky, Barber, well back in the field. Steel City with also... Exp Lindsay Park have got a 10th Blue Diamond. Ben and JD's, their second victory at the highest level, comes in a race that has been in the family for half a century. That David won it on six occasions. Their grandfather, Colin, won it three times. And little bros. From a long way back, um, there's plenty there's plenty to take out of this race. And Steel City, red colours, bolting behind the leaders, has nowhere to go. Extreme, extreme threat. Back behind them, little bros. Then Brave Halo, Zolfa Card on Corleone, the instructor, with 150 to go, grabbed by little bros. Little bros takes the lead from Arkansas, kid Don Corleone. Little bros, it's Hayes again. Little bros, three quarters of an eight. Tenth group, one for the family. David won six. Colin won three. Now Ben and JD have got themselves. Hide him from that inside barrier to follow alligator blood. Watch the little uh, change of tactics to try and have him nice and positive. The 2011 of the maturity. The so alligator blood, well, he's at a $2.90, uh, but geez, uh, thunder. He's tightened up. Back into three dollars. So the top two seventy and two further back at the end of the field, my Oberon. So Nugget just sits up down the hill, led by a length and a quarter. In second, Alligator Blood. They were followed by I'm Thunderstruck, who's only two lengths off the lead. Followed by Aegon, Mr. Brightside, my Oberon. Up around the turn at the 450. Nugget joined by Alligator Blood, who's about to get going. They leave the fence. Aegon's got a run. I'm Thunderstruck's only two lengths off them. Then Mr. Brightside. So it's Nugget, 300 meters to go joined by alligator blood Aegon, and i'm thunderstruck down the middle alligator blood looking for a fifth group one the 150 led three quarters of a length from i'm thunderstruck who can't get there then mr brightside but the gate has done it again alligator blood wins it by a length mr brightside i'm thunderstruck then Aegon or nugget and last of the six was my Oberon in a fabulous race 25th group one for blake shin he controlled it perfectly. It was perhaps case that it could unfold that way, that Alligator Blood would get it on his terms. And he's got a fifth group one under the belt. He simply was bound for the all-star mile second up. Beautiful. Mr. Brightside, Ben, once again, running home in some of the best sectionals of the day. This is a really interesting start to the race. So you see Mr. Brightside. It's going to be tough, though, for Mr. Brightside to turn the tables and Alligator Blood go into an all-star mile, given I thought that was his opportunity to maybe pressure him, try and find out if there are any vulnerabilities first up. 
alligator blood. Is in secret. Our traders are keen to take her on. They're coming though. The zoo gotcha on the second line of betting. So in secret now, just given that she is the lay of the day, she's out to two forty from two twenty this morning. Zoo gotcha has gone five into four, eight into eleven. Sunshine in Paris out of touch to twelves. Madame Pomery will test Cinderella days twenty one and then very close to heels as North Star last gallops to a clear lead by right, two lengths on Cinderella days. Zoo gotcha third in secret on the improve in fourth. Followed by Ruthless Dame on a three wide pass around Revolutionary Miss Sunshine in Paris. Wolverine gets onto Ruthless Dame's back. Further back to Fireburn, Rosita, a lot more love. She's a belt is still pulling hard back in the field. And Madame Pomery's locked up on the fence. Coming around the turn, North Star Lass swings in front by a link to Cinderella Days. Zoo gotcha moving up three wide in secret. Just a little bit cluttered up at the moment. Then Ruthless Dame as Cinderella Days moved up to take the lead. Zoo gotcha giving chase. Now in Secret goes back to the inside from Ruthless Dame sticking on well. It's Cinderella Day. Zoo gotcha in secret winding up now. In secret takes the run to take the lead. Coming home hard again as Ruthless Dame the outside. Oh, and through the middle sunshine in Paris. Here's a great four-way go. I'm really not sure. Ruthless Dame, sunshine in Paris. Zoo gotcha. And the favourite in secret. They were both charging. Zoo gotcha will be improved by the run. She was in the mix. Have a look at this. Four good fillies. They're going to hit it now. And hit it now they do. And it's outside, outside, you would think. And Sunshine in Paris. Lizzie, you've picked the yard for the surround. Take a deep breath, young woman. What a ride. And Annabelle Neesham gets it. Annabelle's looking at the finish it was in them in second and Zoo Gotcha, who I had someone ask me and think, who do you think won? I thought Zoo Gotcha <laughs> running four. How did she finish fourth? <laughs> Some good runs there. In secret, probably a better horse back to 1,200 metres. Uh, Sunshine in Paris. Oh, so what a field it is. Only six, I say only, only $600,000. It seems a little light. South Wales, but Lizzie is the champ. He picks himself, doesn't he? He does pick himself. He was really impressed that we have left. So I know a lot of the punters will be cheering him home, not just for his short price quote there. Fangirl is on the second line of betting. She's eased a ton. This has been strong early. El Bolon, Knight's Order, really being tested by Mawunga. Boma just has to ease back a little bit and let Knight's Order have his own way. Leads by a half length to Mawunga, but the pace has been strong early. El Bodigan gets to a clear third. Two lengths away to Hinge, followed by Fangirl, then Kama Rapahoa. Laws of Indices next on the rails inside the hot favourite Animoa. Two lengths then to Benno from Wetor, Modophilia, and Stockman is the last one. Inside the 600 metres, Knight's Order and Mawunga. They've been at it from the start. Two lengths away to El Bodigan and a clear third, followed by Hinge, then Kama Rapahoa. Animo gets onto his back, and Fangirl is pinching good ground, very good ground as they turn for home. It's Knight's Order and Mawunga the outside. Fangirl has to go back to the inside. Animo lets loose now, and he lets go with a big sprint in the middle of the track. And the super stallion Animo races to the lead and kicked away from the Wunga Fangirl. And then came Laws of Indices, but here's Group Win, Group One Win, number eight for the Great Animo destroys them in the Chipping Norton. Fangirl second, the Wunga brave in third, followed by Laws of Indices, Modophilia late, further back to Hinged and Knight's Order, a gap to. Well, he is a champion, and uh, that was uh, silly. And J Mac gets a ninth group one for the season, and Animo gets an eighth career one and five for this season. Good, good, as simple as that. And you can add to that, Bruce, eight group ones. So you think about it, that puts him alongside Better Loosen Up, More Joyous, Scalacci, Superimpose, Mahogany, Takeover Target. He's in that bracket. So he's in the conversation in the future, Bruce, you would say, for a Hall of Fame. Oh, in it. That was utter dominance from Animo. And, you know, Fangirl wasn't the best part of it. There's no excuses for the opposition. That uh, The margin belied the dominance of that win. It's, uh, as you'd expect, rated through the roof. And he's the best horse in the country now. There's no doubts about that. I think they might get a little bit longer as well. As we look at the second line of betting, we've got Gravina at 420. Good push here for Profondo, and he is our worst way home. So he'll be our biggest loss if he wins seven into six dollars. Quantico is elite. Think about it right there on the rails. Bandersnatch the outside, and Profondo plonks in fourth position. Clear then from Riadini and Sabak for the back. Think about it, takes the lead now. By a half length on Gravina and Profondo rails to third inside Bandersnatch. Then came Riadini, three back the inside of Sabak. 
Then came Ranch Hand from rocketing by, and Quatico will have to come from last to beat them. It's Think About It shooting for four in a row, turning the corner in front. By a length and a half to Gravina. Profondo still on the inside. Bandersnatch coming off heels. They're followed by Sabak rocketing by. Quantico to the outside, but Think About It going. Great guns inside the 200 metres. Two lengths clear from Gravina, who can't really pick up the ground. Then came Bandersnatch, but Think About It going through the classes. And there's four in a row. Think about it, beats Gravina and Bandersnatch. Sabak in fourth, followed by Riadini. Question about that. Ben Wagon for a while. That's his best win. That is his best win. And I love the way that Sam rode him. He was really positive out of the gates. He made sure that he made every post a winner. And he's the fit horse in the race. They all had to catch him. And that was an excellent performance. He had to range, but there is money coming for the others. Just the way the money's pushing that price around a bit, so no knock if you are still on it. Jacano right there. Attrition and Legato getting some really, really good support late here. Legato, $9.50 into $7.50. Eight into seven since we last spoke. They're ready, ready, and they're racing in the Australian Guineas. Elliptical from Marion A. Legato, followed by Bands in that group. Two lengths away, Legato, followed by Bankmore. Jackano is fired up third last, fighting the jockey from Virtuous Circle and laced up heels last. Maximilius as they... Japanese Emperor, Bankmore and Jackano late. Japanese Emperor and Attrition, stride for stride. Attrition just in front. The Philly Legato is driving at them and got up. The Philly, the Kiwi, Legato has nailed attrition. Japanese Emperor third, photo fourth. Bank more amenable. Japanese Emperors run a massive race. Then Jackano elliptical in a dramatic standby for further news. Legato, the Kiwi Philly. It's Michael D with another group one. A, sp a spickle binding performance from Legato. She simply had no right to win that race. Go back and watch it from every six filly to win the Australian Somehow able to pick Legato up and she becomes the sixth filly to win the Australian Guineas in its... The sixth filly to win the Australian Guineas in its 38 running since the mid-1980s. And you put her alongside horses of the quality in Miss Finland, Mystic Journey. It does say a lot about her um, pedigree, I suppose, so far and what she's been able to do at New Zealand. She was tremendously unlucky. That's That's a big effort. Um, the bubble burst on Jaquino going to the 1600 metres, but he's pulled up with EIPH, so there might have been a, a minor excuse there. But whether we see him again, there was talk that he may be retired following this and could be a case of job done, and that might be well and truly um, what happens with Jaquino. He's a multiple Group 1 winner and 1400 metres, but just couldn't take the next step. You've got a feel for Mick Friedman with Christian, went oh so close and looked as though he was going to pick up a Group 1 victory, but in the shadows of the post, it must just feel um, Legato was able to, to pick him up at certainly a long way from the top four earlier. So he's going to be on Gentleman Roy. We're going to give this market a little bit of time to just fluctuate and eventuate because it has been quite the delay here. So punters just hearing he hasn't ticked in the second best. So see Bond, Gentleman Roy. Outside of Luna Flair in the club silks, Port Phillip, and he's a shocker. That's the order, 650 metres to go. Gentleman Roy kept them running by about a length and a quarter to Valu, if anything, getting a little bit closer. Full sign Mav is third from Sosie Bon, a couple to pounding. And then came along the inside, Ryers and Smoke and Roman's Banker's Choice. And then Uncle Bryn Luna Flair. And back in the field then is Port Phillip Fair Story, and he's a shocker. So Gentleman Roy, first to straighten at the 350, looking to do it all. Clear two legs, call sign Mav, Tuvalu pounding. And then came Raya Zan, who's getting a split from Nonconformist. Gentleman Roy at the 150, starting to paddle. Nonconformist grabbing it, followed by pounding and Banker's Choice. Nonconformist drives away for Harry Coffey, and Nonconformist won the blamey. Second pounding, third Banker's Choice, photo fourth. Gentleman Roy all on the inside, Raya Zan, who's run a beauty. Then came Uncle Kick in behind them in third, and here Nonconformist who just didn't have things to suit in the spring, particularly condition-wise. Wins first up for the first time in six goes. It had, obviously, but that was in... Outstandingly well, non-conformist. We know his class. He has that second placing in a Caulfield Cup to incentivise in what was a high-class Caulfield Cup. But 1,600-metre races yesterday at Flemington being the one that Munamek won, the Guineas, and the Blamey. This was the quickest overall time of those three, and quickest by quite some time, 95 you know, truckload of money that's clearly being seen elsewhere with Tab. A uh, remark at four dollars is on the second line now. Giga Kick, interesting. Two dollars eighty out of four dollars sixty about Giga Kick. Four dollars sixty into three dollars thirty about Eduardo. And yet there's seventy percent more money on Giga Kick than there is on Eduardo. Sixty-six, the popper.
Then came Sacred Satano and Giga Kick last eight off the lead. Eduardo Lee to the 600 by a length and a half. Now two lengths on passive aggressive. Remark in third, two lengths away. Then Key Largo, Paoli cluttered up, followed by Sacred Satano, Shelby 66, Giga Kick still last. Eduardo being cuddled by Nash coming up the rise. Two lengths clear from passive aggressive. Remark being stoked up. Giga Kick six off them, getting to the outside. Eduardo in front from passive aggressive. It's Eduardo. Passive aggressive running a huge race. Eduardo from passive aggressive is getting deeper out. Eduardo passive aggressive lunges. I think missed. I think Eduardo and Nose to passive aggressive. They're wide apart. Third between Giga Kick and Remark. Then Key Largo from the bopper. And Caviar in the prize money. And right up behind Santa Anna Lane. So he goes past Black Caviar. And from there, he has got the bob to win over passive aggressive. Giga Kick was excellent. Remark had every chance. Ran well. That's. Oh, I reckon he's... Has he got the outside? Is that passive-aggressive? There looks to be a margin. My eye is not ideal, or is that a dead heat? Oh, Bruce, help me, help me, help me. Well, hey, half a millimetre, Lizzie. Yeah, such a great performance from passive-aggressive and Eduardo, both of them. I mean, really, it's hard to really split a winner when you have a look at those two horses, but I'm sure that Graham Babe will be... She's flying. We saw her last preparation sort of come through the grades and this was a fantastic victory albeit by the barest of margins uh, speaking with graham this morning he said he's just going to let the dust settle and wait, wait a week before making a decision on where she heads next but you can't not look at that replay and think what a performance from giga kick heading towards the tj smith stakes it was just about the run of the day yesterday in defeat he was huge and i'd imagine with himself Massive Aggressive's only defeat was to your um, mayor and chain of lightning in the Cockrum last spring. I imagine 50. That said, the money is definitely on. 50% of the hold and three times more than the next best backed runner, which is Golden Mile. The third best backed runner is actually Cascadian. But as we have a look at the flux, which tell us another story, Golden Mile 460 to 5. Old Flame from Arturia, three wide is Quantico. Well back in the field now, Cascadian from Kerwin's Lane at Argentia's last of all. 600 metres to run, Electric Girl, a half in front to Imperatrice. Lombardo tucked away on the inside third. Followed by Golden Mile, converge deeper out on the track from Old Flame. Uh, deeper out then is Quantico. Arturia uh, strung up between runners. Cascadian back on the rails. Up the rise, Electric Girl. Really being tested now by Imperatriz. And McDonald let the New Zealand mare go. And Imperatriz raced the length clear from Electric Girl. Then came Golden Mile from Converge Kerwin's Lane. But Imperatriz, a length and a half clear. Arturius is bursting home late. Imperatriz in front. Arturius! Wow, Artorius bombed her and won the Canterbury Stakes right on the wire. So Artorius girl really being tested now by Imperatriz and McDonald let the New Zealand mare go and Imperatriz raced the length clear from Electric Girl. Then came Golden Mile from Converge Kerwin's Lane but Imperatriz a length and a half clear. Artorius is bursting home late. Imperatriz in front. Artorius! Wow, Artorius bombed her and won the Canterbury Stakes right on the wire. So Artorius beat Imperatrice, third between Electric Girl, Golden Mile, then Cascadian. Further back, Converge from Kerwin's Lane. He has done it. I thought she was home. I made a big mistake. I actually told Katie she was home, Lizzie. It has not gone down well, I can tell you. Electric Girls run oh so well, but Artorius... In so many ways, how good is it to see him come back like this and for Zach to win a eh? incredible gap at the right time, Richard? And once he got that gap, didn't he just put his nose down and charge at it? That was brilliant. So before today, it was 10. His volume was getting turned up and turned up and turned up, and that's such a significant win for that horse who's obviously going to have a stud career to look forward to. Big to see him come back from that European or UK a campaign where he was brave in defeat in the uh, Platinum Jubilee, then went to a July Cup. Good size field for the size, the group two for the two-year-olds. Stepping up to the 1,400. Yeah, I wanted smells of an upset, and you're getting plenty of value right down the line in this market here, punters, with the drifting favourite V8, having a good sweat down the neck and on the shoulder. He is at 280 out to 
$4.50 now. Dubonetton coming up towards the home corner as they reach the 650. Ganbari in front of Sassy Boom. They slacken the tempo. The Spirit of Zero. Then El Sonzo in fourth. Amur is fifth out three wide. V8 perch behind them from Porta Rosa. Freak of Nature. Apulia well back. Fist of Fury. And also Tom Kitten. There's another one down that was brought down. We'll get back to it later in the straight. 400 metres to go. Sassy Boom. El Sonzo. Move up and take the lead with Amur. V8 trying to extricate off their back. About to do that from Fists of Fury. It's Amur on the outside taking the lead. V8 gets out. And Apulia down the outside. V8 lets down. 100 metres to go. Takes the lead. Stretches clear. Two legs of Apulia. V8. What a nice winner. V8 wins from Apulia. Amur. Fists of Fury. Tom Kitten in fifth place. They were followed next in the field by Freak of Nature. And Respectively, but there might not be a, a better named horse than V8 getting around at the moment. Two for two, both of them in spectacular fashion as Damien Lane was able to extricate this horse who was a early purchase of Magic Millions Gold Coast National Wheeling buy out of a U-Long. He looks a bit of a raw talent. He's not the finished product in the mounting yard, according to Jay and Ivel, but um, there's a lot of talent there. So uh, he's going to be a really interesting horse heading to Sydney for a race like the size produce. And... Um, victory was impressive. It might have been against the B graders, but it just looked like a really impressive victory to me. And also, six through the week, then 26 into 18 on race day. Always a great race. I wish I win. Head. He's just a very exciting secret. Dean Holland replaces Jamie Carr, won the light fingers, then a blanket finish for third in the surround. Following a same preparation way that James Cummings has prepared her. Uh, she likes Flemington. She's a group one winner. And she gets in very light here. And fifth shy win. Geez, he got out to five dollars fifty at one stage, being replaced by in secret, but he's back into favoritism. Clear cut favoritism. Four dollars fifty your favourite on race day. And a good push late for I wish I win Luke Nolan team Moody. There you go, in secret, cheers you get. Horse Bella Nipotina swats that's in the next line from Chain of Lightning Star Patrol. Then came Private Eye in secrets, third last in that pack over on the flat side rail from Buena Noches and also September Run coming virtually up the outside. The astrologist led Marzu and then Lofty Strike Baller and I Wish I Win is last in that group of five coming up the outside. Onto the course proper. 500 metres to go. Snapper led from in second Rock and Horse front page. In secrets only two off the lead. Private Eye back to the inside with Bella Nipotina coming up the outskirts. The astrologist Marzu and I Wish I Win is the widest. Plenty of hopes. In secret took the front. 250 metres to go from front page private eye then I wish I win the outside in secret the leader 100 metres to go lofty strike is flashing down the outside but it's the filly in secret holding on in secret won the new market in secret from lofty strike and I wish I win they were followed by private eye or Marzu from Buena Noches the astrologist front page back behind them just a 40th group one for James Cummings it comes with a pickup rider, Dean Holland replacing the injured Jamie Carr on this flying filly in secret. It's going to be 15, 9 and 3. The three-year-olds have Quinella the race. Lofty strike runs so gallantly again into a placing. And I wish I win, who was perhaps looking for a toe-in from someone on the outside rail, was the best of the older horses running on into third. We have updates on them through the course of the show, but Dean Holland being one of the few riders on course, being able to take the ride at 51 and a half kilos on in secret, executed things to a T on the filly. Yeah, so what we first had is... It doesn't she? I mean, a win in the straight, doesn't she? I mean, a win in the Cornwall was dominant. I thought her first couple of runs, this preparation had been just fair. Um, she's developing this tendency of just missing the start of touch. So full credit to Dean yesterday when she did... Probably missed at a neck or a half length, but he didn't. He wasn't flustered. He was happy just to sit back, sort of. As we all do, there was a bit of silence after there was um, that heavy fall, and um, that didn't really cross my. I wasn't right up um, front page's backside, but I was. I had him had him in sight, and he had, I had a really good bunny. So I elected to get give myself a bit more room and go go back to the inside uh, on front page's back, and from then on, it, everything just opened up, and it was as smooth as you could ever. And what you make of the performance of I Wish I Win, who's left of screen there in that group of five that went to the outside fence? Yeah, well, thanks to Daily Sectionals. He's run the fastest last 800 of the day, I Wish I Win. But I think given how quickly they went, maybe just dragged that real sprint out of him that we saw in the Lightning first up. Not sure. I think the winner was just too good. Um, 
Lofty Shrine open today at $3.40. Now gets out to $3.80. So if your favourite backer, that might be of some appeal. Now, you won't get a better price with any other online bookmaker than Tab for Shinzo. It's on the second line of betting, four sixty now into $4.40. Zolf. Zilla taken back, and Shinzo's going to settle a clear last. So introducing hold to the front from Zulfikar. Base is loaded, taken hold of there, and resenting it. Getting a bit keyed, fired up on the outside of Mahaba. Still firing up base is loaded. Two after Bold and Blazon from Gusto Sissimo, then Limburg. Shinzo pulling three wide, followed by Adana. And Godzilla still last of all. So introducing leads coming around the turn from Zulfikar and base is loaded. When restrained has been very keen in the run. Mahaba back on the inside, fourth. Gusto Sissimo trying to pull out. Shinzo letting down with a lot of authority today. Introducing at the 250, shows the way. He's starting to wander. Shinzo moves up the outside. Mahaba the inside. Side, then base is loaded. It's Shinzo moving up to take the lead. Shinzo gets the upper hand from Mahaba and introducing. Oh, much sharper today, Shinzo. And off to the slipper for Shinzo. Went on to beat Mahaba. Battle for third there between the stable mates. Introducing and base is loaded. Not sure. Furthermore, it's a Peter Feller and those types of people into a golden slipper, let alone Chris Waller. He's done them a big favour, hasn't he? He absolutely has, Bruce. And Shinzo now as their number one colt going into a golden slipper. And not only that, the slipper pick, not only that, the slipper picture has really developed into a, you know, good old Ben Coolmore contest. Uh, the blue look at your market up on your screen. Steel City opened at two dollars and ninety cents. Did touch three twenty, but back into three dollars late. There's been a nibble at longer odds for remedies for Tim Clark. As much as eight. Wow! Ready to go. And they're racing. Steel City's jumped at O'K off the inside. Uh, Remedy's jumped well to get the one touchable legend. And now Steel City's going to use the inside draw to hold out Remedy. Long second last and two lengths away to August Bloom. The favourite Steel City holds the front untouchable legend. Got to a clear second now. In advance of Shine Delight and Remedies. Further back to Fire Lane on the outside of Tequi San Tutsa. Further back then to hell bet on you. Deeper out is Camilla from Bianco Nero. Blanc de Blanc, pretty rail. August Bloom as they straighten up. Steel City being nursed in the lead by two and untouchable legend. Followed by Shine Your Light. Remedies running on and a gap back to the rest. But Steel City going boldly inside the 250 from untouchable legend. Then Remedies. Blanc de Blanc making steady headway now. And then came August Bloom. But Steel City's getting stronger. And the filly ripping away for a big win in the Magic Night. Steel City. Trounces them, Blanc de Blanc second, August Bloom got up for third in front of Remedies, then shine your light, hellbent on you, untouchable. I reckon we've had it shaken up even more by that performance. And what I've loved, Lizzie, that was a really big ride for Riga Bayless. Rich, I mentioned it earlier. So Anna Visto at the moment at $5.50, Hinge at $6.50, Ruthless Dame and Espiona in the market, hope in your heart at uh, nine double figures. Big price for the others, international uh, per pay, and then came Mirror Vision. A, a couple of lengths in the field, then to Sheeza Belder is about midfield in advance there of Espiona. Two lengths away to hope in your heart on the outside of Yearning. Ruthless Dame gets well back with Mustang Valley, Hinge to second last, and more profit sees them all. They're strung out over plenty of yardage at the 800 metres. And Pride of Jenny leads by two lengths on down to Vistale. Torrigine parks on the outside of Expat. Further back to Purple Pay, well positioned on the outside of Mirror Vision. A length and a half, then to She's a Belter. Just clear from Espiona, then came Hope in Your Heart. Further back to Yearning on the fence from Ruthless Day, Mustang Valley. Hinge revved up second last and more profits as they swing. Pride of Jenny with a good lead into the straight. Anna Vista is gone. Pride of Jenny got four lengths in front from Expat. Espiona up the inside, Yearning up the inside. On the outside, it's She's a Belter starting to cut loose. Pride of Jenny's all out and She's a Belter is building home and here's Espiona going up the inside. Espiona the fence from Pride of Jenny and she's a belter. Three of them in it now. Espiona, she's a belter. Pride of Jenny. Espiona wins the group one. Espiona a nose on the line to Pride of Jenny who was game in defeat. Uh, she's a belter third. They get He's going about five group ones to his name. Second only to Jay Mack and all. Oh, yes, 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 she has one. So Lizzie, She's climbed the mountain that we all thought she would have climbed maybe earlier than this after that incredible run on Oaks Day a year and a half ago. Yeah, Bruce, tit for you. A really strong performance, a masterstroke from Chris Waller, and he's alongside Emma Friedman.
not at her best, clearly, but what you didn't see on that vision was how fast they went early. Uh, they went nearly 33 seconds the first 600. I mean, absolutely. From a standing start. Flew and uh, adds merit to Pride of Jenny's second. I mean, she set the tempo. So um, you didn't want to be too far back. Well, he won them both anyway. Can tease a belt. Easy task. Pride of Jenny was incredibly yep. brave, like yeah, setting so that blistering tempo. Mm -hmm. She was entitled to drop out at the 200, but on the line, she was coming again at Espiona. You know, it was a phenomenal run. I mean, Kieran was right of Jenny. And the winner gets a group one that I think everybody has been expecting ever since she did what she did on Oaks Day 2021. And she, yep, exactly. Dry ground. She she doesn't like wet track. She got the dry ground yesterday and it was weighted well. And, and she's just a very good man. Stream choice again. Thanks for their racing in the All-Star Mile. The inaugural running in 2019 showcased a stunning performance. Finish over the... I'm with Mr. Brightside here. I think that he's paraded at his peak. I love his composure. He's one of the most relaxed horses wandering around the yard. So happy to be with Mr. Brightside here in the All-Star Mile. OK, here we go. It's all alligator blood. He's a big loss on the books for sports bet. Come on, punters, let's get him home, the chomper. I'm Thunderstruck, next best at your $6.50. Just it trims up half a point, but uh, Mr. Brightside also with him there at $7. The top three absolutely strip out the mark. So Keats has gone to the front, a 1,000 metres to go, and is going to ensure a good tempo and led by about two and a half lengths. Craig Newitt looks over the right shoulder. He's got two lengths now on Gentleman Roy and Nugget third. Next is Laws of Indices, who's a little wide. Alligator blood between horses. Mr. Brightside the fence and then came I'm Thunderstruck. Thunder's about five off the lead. A length and a half to Aegon, Alan Kerr, the inevitable. Further back my Oberon, she's a belter. Well back in the field is Cascadian with also pounding and two lengths, so Sibon. Keats under pressure at the 600 and Gentleman Roy has taken the lead from Laws of Indices. I'm Thunderstruck is moving up around the outside. They were followed by Alligator Blood who's in awful traffic. Further back in the field Mr. Brightside and Nugget. Gentleman Roy went for home. 300 metres to go. A length and a half in front of Alligator Blood, who's getting into the clear. They were followed by Nugget. And to the outside, Mr. Brightside. Alligator Blood moves up and takes the lead, but Mr. Brightside's challenging. Mr. Brightside up to Alligator Blood. Cascadian late. Mr. Brightside in front. Right side has won the mile from Cascadian, the inevitable. Fourth alligator blood from Nugget. Next in the field, pounding. And then came Sosie Bond, gentlemen, Roy, she's a belter. I this for Ben and J.D. Hayes. Fourth in the race 52 weeks ago. He went and punched his Group 1 ticket at the next start in the Doncaster. And 12 months later, he is very much the wait-for-age contender. Gets another victory under as they've broken 134 and a half in the All Star Mall, giving the track record some sort of shape. The inevitable for Tassie runs in a third. Alligator is, and it's Mr. Brightside, fourth in the race last year. His lead up form suggested a peak performance was coming third up based on what we saw in the or in the futurity. We got it. And wide. I'm Thunderstruck three wide on the back of the laws of indices. He was probably the disappointing runner of the race. He, he was having to work to be there, but. We did learn later on that he, he had some, some pretty severe heat stress. So I think we can be forgiving of his performance. But they were followed by Nugget and to the outside, Mr. Brightside. Alligator Blood moves up and takes the lead, but Mr. Brightside's challenging. Mr. Brightside up to Alligator Blood. Cascadian late. Mr. Brightside in front. And Mr. Brightside has won the mile from Cascadian, the inevitable. Fourth. We're going to take a look at the race from a, a variety of... Describe this as his best race on the card, even though he has Animo. At odds on a little bit later. Two dollars twenty about Pericles, elliptical at five dollars fifty, Linderman at six fifty, Machilate at eight dollars. Rosman still the last one eight off the lead. So it's Linderman full of running it. Down the side of the course, approaching the 750 by two and a half on the favourite Pericles. Just given a little bit of a nudge now by McDonald. Machilate's under the pump. Then came Williamsburg, uh, making hard work of an elliptical from Manzois, Osbert, Rising Sun, and Brosnan as they turn. Nash goes for home on Lindemann. Now Pericles stoked up by McDonald, and the favourite is sticking to the task. It's Lindemann a length, three quarters to Pericles, is almost level now. Yes, Pericles draws level with Lindemann. They're well clear from the rest. It's Pericles trying to get the upper hand from Lindemann. Drifting out Pericles from Lindemann. Lifting! Lifting! Hard. Oh, it's a thriller in the Guineas. Lindemann coming back on Pericles. There's nothing between the pair. Williamsburg third. Then came Elliptical from... So close and close and close. Nash has got 66 boot ones. J-Mass got 75.
fence as close to a dead heat as you'll see in a long time. It does look like the inside, and the inside has got it. So what a stunning performance. And Katie, I've made sure from about a thousand meters onwards, he, he had Lindy hard at trying to chase him down, but the way that he fought and bounced off the canvas has been an unbelievable effort by the horse. And Rich Oden. And that was the fastest edition of the Rose Hill Guineas since Dundee's victory some 10 years ago. Putting how Burley. Had two group ones. Lizzie assassinated it. What do you think of Dubai? Ones. Lizzie assassinated it. What do you think of Dubai Honour? Well, he's beautifully relaxed. Well, he's beautifully relaxed, which is the first sign that he's going to run well. Old stands. Mwanga is a clear favourite and easily the best backed runner. Montefilia at $5.50 on the second line. Now, we took a bet of $10,000 at $5 on Gold Trip and then wound it out a point. Dubai Honor at $6.50 was that horse that opened up at four on the second line. Now at the six fifty, dollars El Bodegon and Bank. They're racing head and head and two lengths away to Banker's Choice. Now Nash starts to turn the screws on Mwanga. He moved up on the outside, a hinged a long way from home. It's hinged and Mawunga going stride for stride now. And Dubayana stalking the pair in third. Botafelia is taking off on the outside of El Bodigan. Then Gold Trip and Banker's Choice coming to the turn. Hinged has still got something in the locker. And Hinge found a length, down a length and a half on Mawunga. And now Ryan Moore's pushing into the clear on Dubayana. Botafelia coming down the outside. Dubayana moved up on the outside, a hinge. They're clear then from Montefilia. Mawunga can't go on. But it is William Haggis going to do it again. Dubayana is three lengths clear. Last year's Montefilia can't get there. And Dubayana can't handle a dry track. Look at him go. Dubayana rip clear to win it by five lengths to Montefilia. Mawunga third. Okay. And Hinge found a length, down a length and a half on Mawunga. And now Ryan Moore's pushing into the clear on Dubayana. Montefilia coming down the outside. Dubayana moved up on the outside of Hinge. They're clear then from Montefilia. Mawunga can't go on. But it is William Haggis going to do it again. Dubayana's three lengths clear. Last year's winner Montefilia can't get there. And Dubayana can't handle a dry track. Look at him go. Dubayana rip clear to win it by five lengths to Montefilia. Mawunga third. Followed then by Hinge, Gold Trip. First. Truthful. Richo, I might, I'll get to you in a second, but uh, uh, is a horse that's not in the top company in Europe that much better than our lot? Unbelievable, long? Bruce. I just, she gave me goosebumps the way that he won. He won with a leg in the air and... Uh, I'm thinking Anna Lowe and the Queen Elizabeth. Oh. oh, boy, oh, boy. Is this horse going to be <laughs> some sort of a, a threat? Richo, you're probably looking... Jim Haggis, of course winning this race with a day of some three years ago. This was a command performance. Ryan Moore just barged him to the lead at about the 350-metre mark, and they were just simply eating his dust. Of course, this is a horse that hadn't won since 2021. He was lightly raced in the UK last year, had just the four runs, a couple of placings, but perhaps the easiest tie into his, you know, bona fides for this race were the fact that he'd run fourth in a Hong Kong up going back to December 2021. Yeah, and chasing horses like Bale. You'd say, you'd say so, and I'm fascinated with this clash in the Queen Elizabeth now because what does that... Patton came in, and these are the horses that have won six or more in a season. Winx actually is the only one that's won more. She won seven, but twice she won six. Have a look at those names. Yes. Very busy man today is James Cummings. So, James, really... He has some chinks in his armours early on in his career, but now he's just so mature, so mentally ready. In the Golden Slipper, he was regarded as a better chance. Yeah, well, he's he's a top horse, we know that. And the... In a horse truck loaded like this in a Group 1 for years. Animo is absolutely hammered. The price is sticking around that dollar eighty mark, but we are talking about a significant loss from a tab side of things if he wins. For... So Electric so going down the side and Electric Girl is the front runner by three quarters to converge right up there. Communist third, Osipenko in fourth. Animo will have to earn his stripes today, sitting three wide. Over on the inside, Artorias Kerwin's lane between them. Further back to Golden Mile and the White Cap from Lion's Roar. Then came Fangirl and Levante's last of all. Coming to the turn, Electric Girl just in front. 
from Converge, Communist locked up, Ossipenko peeling wide, and now Animo getting right to the outside, Converge moved up now, racing to a narrow lead from Electric Girl, Ossipenko and Animo being roused along, Converge at Big Odds giving a great sight, Animo, he's really got a lift, he's coming now, Animo lays it down to Converge, and the big A Animo puts the head in front, rattling home is Fangirl, Animo is George Ryder, Animo beat Fangirl, Converge, Artoris flashing at the end. Then came also Penko, Lavode, Communist, Lions Roar. Ale what did he do? So six group ones for the year. Nine in total, the same number as Nature Strip. It's as good as we've ever seen him to be truthful. He had to be superior. J Mac had nowhere else to go. He had to ride him like the best horse. The best horse, Richo, he was. These are the moments that we dream about on the race course, aren't they? Well, you summed it up so brilliantly, Bruce, when suddenly this horse has become more about the sport than actual the animal himself. That at the start, didn't we? Could they get to the 10 for the season? And Animo gets to six and nine, same as Nature Strip nine, six, same as Black Caviar, Kingston Town, Winks. So you think this is what he is. It's an occasion when he races. Look, the margin's not great. Mentioned, but it was the way that he had to do it tough and find every inch out of him. And what a performance of uh, the run it had. Three wide, wide gate, doesn't matter. A ninth group one, what a gun. He's so tough, you know, and we throw the word champion around and everyone says, no, they've got to prove themselves. But I think yesterday, like, that was such a tough, gutsy win. Like, what a horse. you just got to just got to take your hat off to him and the whole good Olfen team. He doesn't win by being 100 back to 1,500 and, and sat wide and was still too good yesterday. And up to 2,000 metres against a really serious uh, horse in Dubai, and we've got a clash and it's something to look forward to. Converge, you know. And, and Coolmore have got this super colt in Shinzo, and then the uber impressive learning to fly, the filly. So here we are in a slipper. Good luck to all of the connections. Cylinder $3.70 is currently our favourite and just the best backed runner in the race. Learning to fly not too far behind at all in terms of money held, but currently $6. King's Gambit's been a fellas, loses the stable mate, obviously, and uh, we certainly feel for the connections of that runner. Little Bros at $12, still City at much the same. As we head over the page, we're talking 23 or more the remainder. Exploring a firmer, 71 to 41. With Cylinder is the favourite, and they're ready. And the gates are back, they're off, and Learning to Fly has missed the kick. She's second last, and jumping very swiftly, Arkansas Kit wide out with Platinum Jubilee exploring right on the scene. Still City settles in fourth, and Cylinder pushing through on the rails. Blanca Blanc's pretty handy to the leading division, followed them by Don Corleone. Shinzo's whipping up on the rails. They're followed after two lengths to Empire's this last of all. Exploring heads them up down, learning to fly third last from Lazago. And militarized is last of all, exploring heads them up down the side from Arkansas Kid. Back in the field, Lazago being eased out of the race. Steel City in third, Cylinder fourth on the rails from Platinum Jubilee. Then came Blanc de Blanc, Shinzo on the rails as they straighten up. And at big odds, exploring shows the way. But on the outside, Arkansas Kid, Cylinder Roos up on the inside. Hard on the inside, Shinzo starting to run on. Cylinder takes the lead of the 200 from Shinzo giving chase. Cylinder, Shinzo, and right down the outside with a big run late is MP coming home hard. Kings Gambit, but Shinzo and Ryan Moore have drawn clear to win the Golden Slipper. Shinzo beats Cylinder, Kings Gambit third, Don Corleone fourth at Empire Japan. Further back to Arkansas, I believe, militarized, and uh, we lost the rider of learning to fly. Uh, full of drama for her. Chad Schofield's come down over at the 600 metre mark and failing to finish Lazago. So that's the drama. It's Coolmore and Godolphin, the two biggest in the world, and Guri behind them with all the owners. So Ryan Moore gets a third Australian major. Chris Waller clock up. It is a remarkable performance. Ryan Moore and James McDonald up the straight together, Caitlin. One for the age. What, what a ride. What a cult. I just loved his performance last week. And he's just such a cool dude, isn't he? The way that he parades. An amazing effort by Ryan Moore and Chris Waller, as mentioned off the top. They've got 300-plus group ones between them. This was their first golden slipper, and it pretty much gives 
Chris Waller, I suppose, the, the Grand Slam in Australian racing now that he's, he's won all the, the majors there have been. I know that major discussions keys were reported on the wrap a few weeks ago. Japan is still really to go. Japan is still really good at horse racing. Equinox, <laughs> you've got to have a look at the replay of that horse winning the Shima Classic last night, which is traditionally a race we see horses come down here and compete in our cups. Just absolutely smash them. Is this the best horse in the world? Yeah, look, I'm not probably the best qualified to uh, to make comment on that. But having seen this, I'm pretty happy to say yes. I'm not sure there's another horse that's going to be beating him over 2,400 metres on this effort. He's so versatile too. Like, he can take up a forward position as he did last night, but he can also race. Well, Mark, you'd be better versed than me you, uh, to, to judge. Probably tried to buy him at some stage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 2,400, he's... he's... Second like of the 40 as well. It is a group two race and it is the Sunline Stakes. We've got one three-year-old filly that goes up against the four-year-old mares here. We cannot wait to see how revolutionary Miss goes. After which... Three quarters of a length to Cyrileo Miss, who has done a little bit of work. Barb Raider third, the inside. Revolutionary Miss had cover. Peels out three deep. A length away, so you see, who's three off the lead from on front. On say at the 550, then Cliff Sard and Skyhorse drops away. Cyrileo Miss moves up to deny knowledge, heads are off. Revolutionary misses immediately on the scene. 400 to go. Cyrileo Miss a half length in front. From on the outside, Revolutionary Miss two lengths, so you see. And then came deny knowledge around the turn. Cyrileo Miss at the 200 from Revolutionary Miss two lengths off her. And then came deny knowledge. Cyrileo Miss, 100 metres to go, has dropped them. She's going great guns. She'll run all night. Cyrileo Miss has bolted in. Four or five lengths, revolutionary Miss, deny knowledge, Barb Raider. Then so you see a gap cliffs out on from performance. Cyrileo Miss is in red hot form, won the matron stakes, which we'd seen time and time again. In fact, seven of the last 11 years. In a real purple patch with stakes winners across the country. Romp on front. Horse one is Cascading. He was on the quick backup last year in reverse. He ran fifth in the Australian Cup, then fifth in the All-Star Mile. He comes here off a second in the All-Star Mile to Mr. Back to that position in 2023. The 161st Tab Australian Cup, just three minutes away. On the favourite here, Cascadian, now getting out to 390. We'll start with a four next to his name, that is for sure. Okay, nonconformist tightens up into $5, $5.50 now from six. Carefield, then Campionessa, Regal, Power Al, Patronessa, Length, Cascadian, then Yaffet, Luna Flair, and two and a half to Emissary. A thousand metres to go, and Bear Story keeps the pressure on out three wide outside of New Marion. Smoke and Roman snicks back a length off those. The conformist, New Marion at the 150, pounding is pegging it back, and Cascadian late. Here's Cascadian right over the top of them up to New Marion. Cascadian. It's the coming stone again in the Australian Cup. Over the top of New Mary and pounding third. Photo fourth, spoken Roman sees third last. Then Yaffet and Luna Flair around the turn at the five. Former Skadian gets his Flemington Group 1. The old boy deserves it too. He was so good last Saturday in an epic all-star mile. He put the riding on the wall that the extra distance and the backup could suit him down to the ground. They poured the speed on their run just a tick over two minutes flat. 201.43 in an Australian Cup. His third group one to go with a Doncaster and all-aged. Jane, I'll start with you. The fact that he was in the All-Star Mile, to your eye, in the yard yesterday, did he look like the horse that then produced this? Oh, he looked sensational yesterday in the yard. There's more pressure on paper. New Miriam was going and nine lengths above average the first section. Look, the pressure being poured on here by Ben. Um, there's plenty of forgivable performances in the race, but, um, you know, I think all on is the winner. New Miriam was really brave. You know, they've clashed a couple of times at two... I think they'll be heading north with El Petroness, maybe towards the Sydney Cup. She's flying. Just going back to the point you made about James Cummings with Cascade, and I thought it was really interesting that they've now recognised that he's a much better horse going through the pack rather than getting out wide in open spaces. We talk about horses needing space often in races, and that's you know the best way to present them where they get every chance can build momentum. But Cascadian's a bit of a fighter. He likes to get amongst it. And it's actually... Uh, this Red Show guessing game. How many times more on a prowess than Pavitra? Three to one. 5.5. Five. Five and a half times more. Oh, big go. So I was missed it by two and a half. <laughs> Bruce, the group one. What are your thoughts? This looks to be a battle between two. She's a naughty little girl, is Pierossa. The inside Pierossa between them. Then came so Dazzling and Stormy Wetness is still last of all. 600 metres to run. Sole choice in front by Lingtu Provitra. 
Prowess in third, Byron Bell under pressure. Then Whiskey Wisdom from Fireburn, Infinity Even, Cool Die as they flatten for the run home now. And Soul Choice is the leader. But Pavitra is looming large on the outside and a length away to Prowess. It's Pavitra getting the upper hand from Soul Choice. But here comes the Kiwi Philly. Prowess is coming home hard. And Prowess moved up now. Takes the lead in the binary stud stakes. And she's a class act. Pulling right away, Prowess, to win it by three and a half to Pavitra. Third, oh, anyone's guess. Byron Bell, Parossal by out, Fireburn the inside. And right in the mix there was Polygon and in Billy. I mean, that was a run of a champion today. Uh, Pavitra, I thought, was good, Lizzie. And Prowess. And By this preparation, she's, you've got the legato form. You've got the, the fact that she's been able to really make a mess of a very, very talented filly in Pavitra. And the way that we... Got Bruce... Uh... Roger James is um, Roger James is a very very good trainer. Very emotional one too. Back and have a look at the quality of horses that he's had over the years. Roger James he has trained some outstanding gallopers. So for him to set her apart and say this is potentially one of the best horses I've ever trained um, gives a little bit of insight into her ability. Um, have been winning at fourteen of the past twenty editions. A horse in the top two in the market has taken it out. Six of those were favourite. Another eight were second favourite. So Cylinder at two dollars fifty looks a great chance. And there's twice as much money on Cylinder. As as there is on our second favourite in V8. Apparently, they said early doors, Empire of Butch Cassidy and Co. Just another reminder, I did mention it earlier, but... They're followed by Brave Me, just off the speed, bold and blazing deep out. They're followed on the inside to militarise, just shading Don Corleone. Now, Cylinders in the second half of the field in a bit of traffic, followed then by Mahaba from Pier peer pressure and still back last Cafe Millennium together with Empire of Japan coming around the turn, bases loaded coming away from the rails, Butch Cassidy's got the inside run, then came Militarise and V8 being revved up by Lane a length further back to Brave Mead, now Cylinders coming off hills getting to the outside, bases loaded being tackled by Militarise and Militarise storms to the front from bases loaded, Don Corleone's running on and further back to peer pressure but Militarise is on firing right up here on the English Size draws away for an emphatic victory. Don Corleone second, peer pressure, the lone filly of the field, third in front of V8. Then came Mahaba. Yeah, amazing effort there by Villager Eyes. He, he's, he drew barrier one and, and Magic Man Joe Marrero, he's, he just gave him such a sweet ride. He's a cult by Dundeal. Forget he ever went around in the Golden Slipper. Of course, he was a part of all that mess up uh, mid-race there. But before that, he was brilliant winning. He should relish the conditions here. And, uh, yeah, I'm so thrilled for his connections. Newgate, of course, Henry Field and Louise, they put a it's rare air, isn't it, Bruce, considering the TJ is a Group 1. So as good as Manicato was, he won five William Reeves. It was a Group 2 and upgraded to a Group 1 on the back of the man. But you think about Winks and Erin. would have to sit up there, wouldn't he? Because he's been so consistent for so long. He's eight years old now and he's still racing at the highest level. Scratching's a heavy nine officially. Oh. Randwick, where he's been able to be so competitive in each and every one of his victories. Of course, he's going for four TJs. He's just walking in front of me at the moment. Love it. Oh, he's, he would be just relishing the wet track. So heavy tracks. He's had five runs. He's won four times. He ran third and the real X factor. So Sonny's seen two heavy tracks in his career. He's been placed in both without winning. There's something spit without winning. There's something special about this guy. We do not know his ceiling yet. Look at him on his toes, ready to absolutely explode. He is the Everest winner. He loves his 1,200 metres here at Ramwick. And his first up run, you can see she's got a lovely, strong hind quarter. You can understand why structurally she's such a terrific citra. And Lizzie, what about in secret? We know she's a gun, isn't she? Absolute gun, Bruce, and she is a horse that is one out of the box. He doesn't know what that's like, but now he's at his rightful spot now at the head of the market. That is the best back runner in the race. Giga Kick is the second best back runner in the race, but the biggest firmer is Mazu. $15 into $6.50. Everybody's seen the rain. They've heard what Froggy knew it just said. This is a heavy, heavy track. Uh, that's your result. Mazu running well. In secret at $7. Private Eye at $7.50. I wish I win at $9.50. I'll let you guys... It just leads from Nature Strip, who's got his preferred spot outside the leader. Mazu rails to third from Shelby. 66 in secret off the track.
together with Maria Mia. Lost and running out very deep from Private Eye. Lofty strike shades of rose. Rocketing by. I wish I wins the last one. 600 metres to run. And Nature Strip takes the lead clearly now. By a length and a half on passive aggressive. Mazu rails to third from in secret. Lost and running out deep. Going through the middle now is Giga Kick in the white cap. Clear from Shelby 66 and Maria Mia. Nature Strip rolls up the rise. Three lengths clear from Mazu. Passive aggressive. Giga Kick five lengths away. Nature Strip, the world champion sprinter trying to fend them off. Mazu's the first to challenge. Nature Strip, Mazu. Giga Kick lengthening. And I wish I win down the outside. I wish. I wish I win, went past Giga Kick Mazu. I wish I win from last. A spectacular TJ win. I wish I win. Knocked off Giga Kick and Mazu. Nature Strip fourth. Then came Maria. Nature Strip rolls up the rise. Three lengths clear from Mazu. Passive aggressive. Giga Kick five lengths away. Nature Strip, the world champion sprinter, trying to fend them off. Mazu's the first to challenge. Nature Strip, Mazu. Giga Kick lengthening. And I wish I win down the outside. I wish. I wish I win, went past Giga Kick Mazu. I wish I win from last. A spectacular TJ win. I wish I win. Knocked off Giga Kick and Mazu. Nature Strip fourth, then came Maria Mia. Further back, lost and... Oh, what a triumph. And how fitting. I mean, the two men behind the one and only that won it twice before we had the championships in Black Caviar, Luke Nolan and Peter Moody. We saw the old firm and the Golden Eagle. Look, it was a magnificent race. Nature Strip was outstanding. Those old legs. It was Mazu and Giga Kick. It was the Everest for a moment. But then there was the flashing run out wide. Emma, I reckon you're down there at the moment. I might come down to you. It's the horse. She's the first photo that's going on during an interview. Yeah. Um, tell us about what this horse means to your family. It's very special to our family, obviously. But, uh, I, I've got to say, I laid down at 10.30 this morning. The track was a good four. I was a very happy man. I got up at a quarter past 12. It was a heavy eight. I didn't want to come to the races. But, uh, really oh, listen, he, he, uh, it was a good job. Luke uh, used the rest of the field for as long as he could. And uh, you could always see him coming. But, I, oh, listen, I'm very proud of him. He's a bloody good... ...and all of that over in New Zealand. It was a magnificent race, and I doffed my hat to Nature Strip. He absolutely gave it his all. Mazu was what we expected, Katie. A giga kick right up to his uh, his Everest, and I wish I win, Emma. You've got uh, that little fellow. We traded to the last one, so I'm very, um, very happy to be part of it. And Moon's own side of it, and he's a massive swinger, so it's even, even better. That's the best news yet. So he gets over the miles. A lot of time early. Uh, we're going to be able to see this horse race on for many years to come, hopefully. So, um... It's amazing horse, so I'm, I'm glad um, I'm glad of that. Big, big race at Royal Randwick, and for many, many, many years, the biggest. Let's go. Bo Sunline and more joyous than the last 50 years have carried this weight or more to win. Yeah, it's hard to do. It was an excellent win in the futurity. Well, the winner of the All-Star Mile was Mr. Brightside. He won this race last year. Lizzie's with him. Well, we saw him down in the stalls, and he's here in the mountain yard. He's back to defend his crown. And since he won that last year's Doncaster, he's been able to win an all-star mile. I actually think he looks better this time around than he did last In the race. And there are a few that are big firmers at big odds, but the money isn't necessarily there. So let's roll through it. So Gotcha at $8.50, well supported. Fangirl at $11. Protagonist, nine outs, $12. I'll let you guys read through a few because I want to make special mention of Mustang Valley, 81 to 9. But hardly a Zach with tab fixed odds. And the other all 81 into $41. And there is a little bit of spec in there, but a 15th of what we're seeing from Mr. Brightside. JD Hunt is the last one. Lindemann leads up the Doncaster field and the lone fillies who got you got to second. Then came Gentleman Roy from Alligator Blood Sepius off the track going forward. On the outside of Bandersnatch, then came Mr. Brightside. Down on the inside from Golden Mile, Communist out deep, going global, the American mayor between them. Further back to Ossipenko, then came Converge from Duke de Sessa, starting a run now at the 600 metres. Further back to Nugget from My Obron, Fangirl all flooded up, Mustang Valley, the rails, deep route, Lions Roar, and Hope in Your Heart. Lindemann spins the corner in front of the Donny. It's Lindemann just in front from the Philly Zoo. Gotcha, gentlemen, Roy and Mr. Brightside cruising up on the inside. Coming down the outside is Nugget with a great run. Zoo gotcha in front from Nugget the outside, and Mr. Brightside is really starting to lengthen now. Mr. Brightside moved up to join Nugget. Then came Osipenko, Mustang Valley, and My Obron bursting. 
through. Mr. Brightside in front from my Oberon. Mr. Brightside lifting and goes back to back. Mr. Brightside held on from my Oberon to win the Doncaster again. Nuggets finished in third. Then Osipenko, Mustang Valley, hope in your heart. Further back to Communa, Sue Gotcha, Prana. Sue Gotcha in front from Nugget the outside. And Mr. Brightside is really starting to lengthen now. Mr. Brightside moved up to join Nugget. Then came Osipenko, Mustang Valley, and my Oberon bursting through. Mr. Brightside in front from my Oberon. Mr. Brightside lifting and goes back to back. Mr. Brightside held on from my Oberon to win the Doncaster again. Nuggets finished in third. Then Osipenko, Mustang Valley, hope in your heart. Further back to communists. For such a long part of the last 100 metres, and it took forever, but it does look like Mr Brightside's become the 10th horse. He has become the 10th horse to defend the championship. He's just so tough, isn't he? And he just he had to give his all the last 50. When my Oberon came to him, he just was never, ever going to lay down. What a horse that he's been for all his connections. Uh, a great ride from Zach Purton. Had the confidence in him, and uh, wowee, it's going to be a party tonight. So he gets the all-star mile and two Doncasters, Richo, as we go down to you. What Last year for Ben and I and the team at Lindsay Park, what this horse did to win it and then to go back to back, it's just, it puts him in rare air. Um, he's, he's a very special horse. We've known it all along, but he's he's now a very special horse in his own right doing something like that. So uh, He just digs in. What a horse. I thought I had it, the one on the outside I was in a race with and I was fighting him off and then all of a sudden the one come on the inside and... I was praying that winter post was coming because he he was getting to me, but my horse was very brave and he didn't really love the ground, but his class got him through it. He's an amazing horse. Oh, he's now won nine races over this trip, including two dog passes and an all-star mile. Yeah, it is. It's great, Katie, isn't it? Named the Sydney Cup. The legendary a couple of weeks ago was around the $8 mark, bottomed out at $3.50, now $4.40 favourite for the race. King Frankel at $5.50, Gold Trip at $8. So in terms of King Frankel, so as we make our way down further, Stockman, 26 out of 34. There was specking earlier in the week when we thought it had been monsoonal rain and we'd be on a swamp, but $34 on the drift today. A reminder to get on the tab. Salino is the last one down the back. They've got 1,200 metres to go on the Sydney Cup. Knight's Order has the lead all on his own. Knight's Order out by two lengths to King Frankel. Arapaho still sits a handy third clear from True Marvel. They're followed then by Nerve, not Verve, on the inside of Amade, then Stockman. Further back to Cleveland there, just in advance of Tamoor. Then came Explosive Jack Gold Trip. Now right up on the inside is Sure Fire. They're followed further back by Pesto from Alakahan, High Emotion. And Sir Luke and Baron Samurai still well back as well. Down the side of the course, Knight's Order in front. Knight's Order, under plenty of pressure, King Frankel given a real wind-up at this point through Marble pulling out. Arapaho still tucked away on the fence, followed by Nerve, not Verve. Amade under the pump, Stockman under the pump. Further back to Tamor. Nothing making any ground at the moment as Clark goes for home on Knight's Order. Arapaho's been the stalker and true marvel at big odds. Nerve, not Verve running on from King Frankel. Uh, many lengths away to the rest. True Marvel. True Marvel moved up on the outside of Arapaho and Knight's Order. Explosive Jack, the only one making any type of ground. It's True Marvel in front for Cathy O'Hara in the Sydney Cup. But here's Jack. Explosive Jack over the top on the Sydney Cup. Explosive Jack ran down True Marvel and Knight's Order third. Then came Arapaho. Further back to Alakahan, Stockman, Nerve, not first. What about Dylan Gibbons? Uh, Richo, it has been a colossal result. A derby winner comes back to win the cup. Well, I'm right in amongst it all, all amongst these men. All before him against Dubai Honor, who put down a marker three weeks ago that looked. Dubai Honor today. Well, the world stage is matching two between Animo and Dubai Honor. Animo lays it down, Dubai Honor. To see how this guy goes. Of course, he's shooting for his 10th Group 1 victory. And we know in previous... Just what you'd want. Dubai Honor, uh, incredible performance in the round, but he was almost asleep in the stores when he had a look at him a few minutes ago. Yeah, he, he blew me away. staggered by what is happening with the money. Dubai Honor was as low as $2.15 earlier on this morning. Nearly every tipster in the country was steering that direction, and yet the money for Animo is unreal. $2.70 at the moment. So best backed, Dubai Honor, our favourite for now.
It's fascinating. Yes, to rattle the line cage up front. It's Unicorn Lion, has the lead on his own. By three quarters of a length to Numerian. Then came He's a Shocker. And Aussie Animos up running fourth, followed by Old Patroness. Then came Gear up from Mawunga. Dubayana hasn't got going as yet. Still about four lengths behind Animo and the run. Further back to Monophilia. Then came Zarek. And Alan Kerr's last in the Queen Elizabeth of 2023. And Unicorn Lion at the 600 metres, racing boldly in the lead from New Marion. Then he's a shocker from Animo, just given a little niggle now by McDonald. And Marquin gets going on Dubai Honor as they flatten for the run home. And it's Unicorn Lion, two links clear. Animo's cutting loose. Dubai Honor's cutting loose. This is what we've been waiting for. Unicorn Lion being grabbed by Dubai Honor. And Animo in the middle. It's Dubai Honor hitting the lead from Animo. They beat up Unicorn Lion. But Dubai Honor is drawing clear. And William Huggis has done it again. Dubai Honor by three. Thanks to Animo. Mawunga rattling home into third. He's a shocker fourth. Then Unicorn Lion from Numerian. Further back to Monophilia. Then came... So this love affair with the Queen Elizabeth Stakes for Tom Marquand and William Haggis just continues. It was just exceptional. He was under a ride for so best today, Richo. He's a star and he's been absolutely far too good for our best today, Richo. Oh, William, congrats. Very good. Don't, don't underestimate him. He's a pretty good horse, and he was boxing. Never quite right last year. He was boxing against some good horses. Top, top horses. So, he, he does he's a good race. He's a good horse. Don't underestimate him. Yeah. I back a year and a half ago, and he was second in that championship race that Ascot was, and he said, so he is a high-quality horse. And, Richard, I just think he's come on here, don't you? No, no doubting that, Bruce. And I think it's really important that, that go back and have a look at that Group 1 champion stakes at Ascot. He was uh, two and a half lengths ahead of Mishrif. We know how brilliant Mishrif has been. He was 11 lengths. Jenny's attracted some support at an each-way price there. $21 at the moment, fourth best backed runner in the race. Uh, but splitting those, we have Hope in Your Heart. So four times more on alcohol-free than Hope in Your Heart. Sierra Leone Miss is a gap back to third. Levante are there alongside Pride of Jenny in terms of money held, but splitting them a tissue and hinged. Stabina, a little bit on the easy side. 26 out of 41 now to third. Same state, matter. Two further back to a tissue over on the inside of Hope in Your Heart and Times Square out three wide. Further back to more secrets at this point. As they travel up to the turn, Promise of Success is off the track. They're followed then by Roots. Uh, then came Bring the Ransom and Hinged as well back as they come up to the home corner. Now Levante's about six last on the turn. Into the straight. Pride of Jenny goes for home. Alcohol free, the boom mare giving chase. Pride of Jenny up the rise, a length and a half to alcohol free. And a tissue just cruised into it. A tissue into the front and more secrets giving chase. Forget the favourite. A tissue race two lengths clear from more secrets second. Oh, anyone's guess for third, but a tissue. She's ripping away here in the hands of Nash Rewilla. What a win in the queen of the turf. A tissue bolts in, hoping your heart stormed into second. More secrets, third. Hinge from my, from a mile back round fourth. Then came Lavotte just behind. So Chris Waller gets a tenth. Gets a tenth group one for the season to keep it rolling on. And Richo, well done to you. I wish I had sneezed a bit louder. She was brilliant. Oh, Chris, congratulations. The tissue, just turn around so we can get a good look at you. Um, Ten group ones for the season. Seventh time you've been able to do that and join a, a legend of the Australian racing and doing it. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah, it's been a great day's racing. We've been, we haven't been. At this stage, $2.30. Oh, the money suggests it's more of a $3 chance. But anyway, I don't think we'll get to that price. Never talk at $8. Hypothetical at $8.50. Now for hypothetical. And expat out of the pack goes to second from Sky Command and jump the broom back to fourth in the black jacket. They're followed after two lengths then to Oakfield Arrow, Dalcini and the favourite Zapateo's out three wide. I'm not sure if it's got a back to follow or not. Jale behind, then Nicky's fling and Princess Grace going between runners as they turn. Hypothetical coming wide together with Expat. Sky Command's got the fence all to its own. A couple off to Zapateo is running into it nicely. Three lengths off the lead and further back to Princess Grace. Expat in front. Zapateo quickly moved up on the outside, launched the attack. Princess Grace, the American mayor's running on, but Zapateo 
goes into overdrive and the last favourite home, Zapateo. Never talk from a mile back will get up and run second. Princess Grace third, expat fourth, followed by Jale, then Kiku. Jump 20 when he won the Oaks, the Cup, and the Percy Sykes. So, Jay Mack, and I'm just uh, looking at this win. Jesus was impressive, Katie. I'm, I'm thinking maybe you're Robert Sangster for her. Maybe they think. Okay, that's her fifth stakes win. Maybe we could get her. Jess, that he is in for a bottler of a first up run. He's undefeated, this guy. So he comes in. On his shoulders. We shopped around as much as $2.60 about lunchtime today, and the points bet punters have absolutely climbed into that, now into as short as $2.10. Came right you are and starts Bangled Baby. A length away, horrifying. Man Kayan about to drive forward. They're two lengths in front of Luna Flair. Well back, Kamora and Captain Envious. So White Marlin just in front of Fancy Man as they descend the hill 600 to go star spangled baby still there three wide horrifying launches four deep a length and a quarter right you are needs a bit of luck and then came man k and luna flair and captain envious they run for the money 400 meters to go white marlin went clear about a length and a half in front of star spangled baby right you are back to the inside then horrifying white marlin 250 meters to go three quarters of a length in front of right you are the favorites fight it out white marlin charles pulls the stick at the 150 a length in front of right you are and man k and late but it's white White Marlin remains undefeated and a Melbourne Cup journey starts here. White Marlin wins it by two lengths. Second right you are. Photo third, Luna Flair, Orban Kayan, and then came Fancy Man. A gap in the... How strong Emma was he on the line? Bruce, he is as tough as old boots, this guy. So he's challenged by right you are. Great to see these two dueling out. One's at the top of who's undefeated. When he was challenged, as you said, he just kicked again. He gave a little bit more. He's a tough old stayer, and dare I say, because now I'm even more excited about what he's got in his future. Put me in the same wagon as you, Emma. Long is the is the golden slipper in so many ways. Yeah, she's an incredible filly, isn't she? And it was just great to see her return in such excellent order. Of course, there's a really strong contingent of Eastern State horses, but this is the highlight horse for WA. She is so dynamic. She's got a great turn of foot and a foot, and she's a horse that we can see definitely taking on the... So a massive moment coming up, a $4 million quokka. The horses will be into that mounting yard. You, I think uh, this is short of her best trip. She just needs speed on. If there's speed on, they get cover. Her turn of foot, I think, is the best in the race. Yeah, eight star. Lots of money for the two favourites late. They've been very heavily backed. And that's probably not a surprise. So class is expected to come to the top. So the group one winner ahead of the group one winner ahead of the group one winner. And then one that's contested many group ones in overpass with our sport. Racing in the quacker. First of them to get going. Certainly jumping fast is overpass, and as Fura got out very quickly, Red Can Man, a length away resort man. Kevin Tari pushing up for Oliver down near the inside, then Bustler. Followed further back, Western Knight, Bella Nipotina strung up near the rail, and Carberry's back last of all with Amelia's Jewel spotting the leader. Seven or eight legs, 400 left to go. Straightening up now in the quacker overpass, as Fura going toe to toe. They're giving each other the big eyeball. Red Can Man joined them both, though. A length and a half, Uncommon James letting down. Where's Amelia's? Jewel back in the field, but running on strongly as for a overpass. Red can man, 100 left to go. Overpass as for a Amelia's Jewel coming. She's coming at the rate of knots. Overpass Amelia's Jewel. She launched. Did she get there? I don't know. She came. She came like a train. Amelia's Jewel got to it. 100 left to go. Overpass as for a Amelia's Jewel coming. She's coming at the rate of knots. Overpass Amelia's Jewel. She launched. Did she get there? I don't know. She came. She came like a train. Amelia's Jewel got to overpass in the shadows. A photo here in the quacker. Behind them close up. Hot sands there. We'll say Bustler. Bella Nippets. Well, what's happened here? Has she got up? Lunging, lunging, lunging. Oh, it looks overpass to us here, doesn't it? It looks the in oil. Ow. Oh, oh. Gee, it's Come close. On. Wouldn't it be something if we had a dead heat of the inaugural, the Quaffa Bellatina? Oh, so fast. So they've gone with overpass as the winner over Amelia's jewel. Exactly the point, but I'd love to get a camera on Bjorn Baker right now. If he's won a $4 million quokka, he'll be absolutely hitting the... Bella, Bella Nipotina will be third. She was terrific. Here is Bjorn Baker with Lizzie.
he, he's a very good horse, fresh. And you know? like, what? How good is the mare? Her run was phenomenal. I'm staying with Simon Miller, so sort of I got to feel feel a bit bad, even worse for that guy's iPhone. But <laughs> I paid for that. No props, mate. I'll sort you out. Uh, so you do. It's a, it's, a, it's a luck of the drip, the best runner in the world. And and last time he bit Anima in the in the um last autumn. So just thrilled. Derby racing. They've been great supporters of mine. And brave call to have taken both horses there, and he's been rewarded. What an incredible race. I mean, look at those first four. All four of them were outstanding, weren't they? Oh, no doubting that. Do the double and go on with it. He's into even money now, and he looks to have found his mark there, sort of fluctuating between even money and got as short as a dollar eighty-five a little bit earlier. Jump to Don Corleone. Last of all, 800 metres to go. Bases loaded, comes back to them. Led by a length now to Townsend from Kintyre in a clear third. Further back then to peer pressure, railing to fourth inside, make a call. And the favourite off the course there, militarised, trying to take closer order. Don Corleone gets onto his back from Marali. Tom Kitten boxed up on the fence. And Felix the Scats last, coming around the turn. Bases loaded, led the way from Townsend second. Then came Kintyre, militarised, getting to the extreme outside, running on well. Don Corleone two behind him. Bases loaded on the fence, just the leader from Townsend. Militarised, launching his attack now. A length after Don Corleone. Bases loaded in front. Militarised is heading top gear. Militarised moved up now, takes the lead late, and Militarised blows the champagne stakes. Put it by a length and a half to bases loaded. Townsend the third. Tom Kitten doing his best work late. Then came... So Chris Waller does it. So he does what only Peter Snowden had done in the past so with Paul winning the treble crown with two different horses. Shinzo into Militarise and Militarise. And this incredible... Which has seen sprinters, such as Hainist, get their chance. It's Haley's first. Photo for the miners. As well as middle distance gallopers, like the mighty Atlantic Jewel. Atlantic uh, Atlantic Jewel beat Rain Affair. This race and the trophy to go with the now record $1.5 million in prize money. And Militarise into Giga Kick Multi. So we'll be cheering him home for lots of reasons. He's hit his mark now at $3, so he does have the hold. He has just eased a touch from this morning, two sixty out to $3. Second elect is Zaki, 6 into $5. The push, though, and probably the reason that Giga Kick's got out of touch, has been for Cascadian. The old boy, 10 into six fifty. Mark Cascadian, so it's lost and running, taking control of the race. Lost and running out by three lengths to Marzu and Electric Girl. Zaki ridden with cover. A half the outside to band of snatch. Then came Rock and Horse from Jack and Earl. Ho -O Amazon on a three wide trip, followed by Colding, Giga Kick, and Cascadians last of all approaching the turn. And Markwin really letting Lost and Running Gallop. He's out by six lengths now on Marzu. Zaki moves up on the outside. Electric Girl stoked up the fence. Band of snatch deeper out. Giga Kick getting to the outside, 10 off the lead. Lost and running, comes up the riser, healthy leader. By four lengths on Zaki. Giga Kick down the outside, Marzu the inside, and further back to Cascadian. Giga Kick sustaining the run, went up with Zaki. Giga Kick and Zaki, two lengths away, then the band is snatching Cascadian. But Giga Kick's got a strong kick, and he goes home in the group one of it, winner. Giga Kick by two lengths in the all eight stakes. Zaki. Trying to cling on for second in a photo with Cascadian. Clear from Bandersnatch, Jack and O. Further back to ho -O Amazon, who had a wide path. But Williams makes the comeback of all time to get back. And this horse announces himself as probably the next big thing in Australian racing. And Everest and all who have done so much in what was, I think, one of the best renewals of the all age in many a day. Absolutely right. And Giga Kick was ridden to perfection by Craig Williams. He just popped him out and asked him the question and having not been seen for a while. And look at our old friend Cascadian. He's just uh, come home flying and uh, he's... Uh, Let's go down and join Clayton Ducks. Clayton, you have just... I guess I've been... Up 1,400. Absolutely enormous water training performance. Thank you. <laughs> Lost my voice again. Um... <laughs> um <laughs> What about you to be able to win a group one? You've only been training by yourself for a, a couple of years and you won an Everest. I'm getting a bit emotional about this one. I'm, yeah, it's, um, it means a lot. It's, you know, it's um, everything we strive to do and yeah, it's, it's phenomenal. Ah, uh, that's what it means. A young man, eh? Look at that. That's what it means. He, 
he's lived with this horse basically. This horse is that. I mean, that's an. Well, he might be able to go and pick up a Doombin ten thousand on the way through. You know, that's a one and a half million dollar race. I mean, Queensland would be at his mercy, but then they'll be very conscious of how much do they push into that winter and keep in mind what they've got up their sleeve from the favourite. Uh, race of the day, the Andrew Ramson, to be honest. Uh, this is at listed level. You win it, you're in the Melbourne Cup, and it's all about the favourite, White Marlin. He bottomed out when Markins opened on third. He cleared 14 into $8.50. That's where the late money is, and also third round once. Well, Salino is last, so White Marlin, 1,700 metres to go, is going to keep them moving here, and led by three lengths, Val and Declare, two lengths to five, which is White Marlin. 1,200 metres to go, is going to run this solidly throughout, and it's it's White Marlin leading by four legs, Val and Declare. Two lengths to Timor. Then came along as in meters. Two for the back. He's a shocker. Luna Flair, about oh, probably 12 off the lead at this stage. Then Southern France. Next in the field are made Herman Hess. And then Cadre du Noir. Further back, Alakahana, Aurora's Symphony, Hustle Award, Long Arm, well back, Salino in third realm. So it's White Marlin, 700 metres to go. Just came back to them fractionally, a length and a quarter. Vow and Declare. Here comes El Patroness to the outside. Timor wax away before the corner as they run it towards the 450. White Marlin. Now Childs gives it a dig. Still led by a length and a half. El Patroness and Luna Flair into the clear is coming home hard. Vow and Declare, he's a shocker. White Marlin. Marlin at the 300, grabbed by Luna Flair, who ran on by from El Patroness. A gap has to the war. It's over. Luna Flair at the 150. Four legs, five legs in front. And the mare is going to come away, Luna Flair, and get her spot in Australia's most iconic race, the Cup. Luna Flair won it by five legs, White Marlin. Has to the war third. Photo fourth, El Patroness or Salino, who ran through the line. Then as they run it. She has dominated the Andrew Ramsden with a performance to enjoy. They've run some serious time here. White Marlin poured it on and in the end set it up for Luna Flair. Of course, the Bart Cummings winner of last spring wasn't able to take her place in last year's Lexus Melbourne Cup. Graham Begg and his team can set Ramsden and punches her ticket to Tuesday, November 7. The 14th mayor in the 60 runnings of the Duke of Norfolk, now known as the Andrew Ramsden, to win this race and win it in style and social platforms. It's time for the SA Derby. Some must have market here. Thomas Farm, South Australian Derby. Promises kept favourite, $4.40. She's fit. Aberfeldy Boy, $10. Loco, who's ridden patiently. Likewise, Aberfeldy Boy. And the last one is Reservoir Dog. They're working to the side and nearing the 1,000 metres in the Thomas Farm, South Australian Derby. And the leader is Promises Kept. Dunwoody's got to second. Here are the runs going early. Out wide, moving up is She's Fit. It's starting to pour the pressure in. Ain't P. Grand's also moving. And Pluto is just zooming along in behind them, alongside of Swa Zero, then Bengal Boy, Prince Takia, followed by Gotta Be Savvy. Loco's midfield now is improved with Dunkel, Red Sun Sensation. Then came as they race up to the bend, Northern Barrage. Towards the back is High Approach and Reservoir Dog. It's a packing field in the derby, and promises kept. Still shows the way, 500 metres to run. She's fit right there, ready to pounce. Bengal boy in behind them now. Is Swazero getting into the clear? And then Loco joining in from Dunkel. Promises kept dash for home. She's a couple clear with great acceleration. Bengal boy, local. Then came Dunkel and she's kept. Promises kept, kept going. A couple clear from Bengal boy. Dunkel's rallying late. Dunkel after promises kept. Dunkel reeling in, and the Derby's his to save her. Dunkel won the Derby from Promises Kept. Aberfeldy boy might have grabbed third from Loco, and then Bengal boy. Swa zero, Reservoir Dog ran on, Red Sun Sensation. High up of Hill, Dunkel storms to Derby victory, a maiden group one for Billy Egan, Patrick Payne. He won this race as a jock world. Tell me a bit about the ownership group. Well, mainly it's Patrick and Andy Morton who works for... Uh, job that he's done with him. Just sensational. What a record he's building. He's now won six from eight. He yeah. won the Tasmanian Derby as well. He did, yes. Uh, and I, don't, I don't know whether you saw those, but he couldn't win it at the, <laughs> the 20 metre mark and he's burst through. He's just an amazing... He's an amazing... Group one's everywhere and this is our feature today. One and a half million dollars up for grabs.
for the Ladbrokes, Doombin 10,000. It's over 1,200 metres weight money. If Giga... Uh, so you think Chautauqua Northerly for Seek Legend if he wins today. That's not bad, is it? So he jumps up behind Zaki and the next... Huh? And have a look at what he did as a three-year-old. I mean, Giga Kick lightly raced and has had this remarkable season and won all that money. But have a look at Manakata from a Coolmore start of the moment, Emily. Yeah, Giga Kick, he looks great, doesn't he? And uh, Clayton Douglas has made no secret of how well this horse is, how confident he feels about uh, where Giga Kick... Well, listen to Clayton Douglas during the week. You would think the $1.60 is value, a dollar ten off the back of his confidence levels. Beyond that, though, half cabin is our $5.50 second elect. Mazu at $9.50, having peaked at $11 at one point. Valana has hardly moved from that. They've gone through the first 400 metres, overpass outside of Prince of Boom, testing him, but not crossing him at this stage. We had a smart one slotted into a butte spot in third, and the roughy set a fire in fourth. Have a look at Giga Kick. Have a look at Giga Kick at the halfway mark. He's fifth, four off the lead, and travelling extra well. Then came Valana, followed by Half Cabin. Well back was Marzu, Maria Mia, and a case of you was last. First 635.03. He peels out four and five wide on Giga Kick. Prince of Boom led into the straight. Rover pass on the outside. Giga Kick is ambling up to that pair. Wider was Half Cabin, and the other set of mine, we own a smart one. He hasn't released the grey jet off. Giga Kick on the outside. Over pass still in front. Giga Kick's got to dig deep now. He's digging deep. He's digging deep. And he's going to win the 10,000. Giga Kick bent over pass. Brave in defeat. Marzu, a rattling third. And fourth was Half Cabin. A case of you not far away. Then Prince of Boom, Valana, Maria Mia, and the tail end. It's a terrific win. He's beaten very good horses. Overpass continues to excel. Marzu runs very, very well. Half Cabin was good, but... It wasn't pretty, M. A good win, a big tick. He goes to number nine on the all-time money list. And this group one has had a long and illustrious history. It's always popular, but there's 10 times more on Zaki than the next best back runner in the race, which is Hutor. I'm going to change from Puerto to Hutor today. Straight, Dubin Cup. 2023, 900 left to run, and Zaki is on a mission to try and lead all the way. He leads Baker's Choice by a length, and Zarek is a length away in further at the half mile. You married in fourth, Dewis fifth, and then go Palmetto, followed by Wedor, Diamil, Kovalega, no compromise. Three lengths away, non conformist, and a tissue faces a huge task from last of all. By the 600 metres, the first 1400, 126, 16, the leader is Zaki. He starts to ride him along now as Baker's Choice gets closer on the outside. Numerian was next. They're followed by Zarek, just waiting on an inside run as Zaki turned into the straight in front. What's under the bottom? Well, no soon. He leads Zarek up on the inside. Why did you marry at Baker's Choice? Went on into the clear and Kovalika pitching inside runs. Zaki is all out. He is all out the favourite. He is gone. You married a winner on the outside. Now pair off for the cup prize. On the outside, Wedor. Got a little better than you married. Wedor's cut. Well won. Beat you married. Kovalik a third. Watch the derby next week. And Dewis in fourth. Then came non-conformist. So we get our dual winner, don't we? It was not what we were focused on completely. That is for sure. So Wedor goes back to back. The fourth horse now to win two Doombin Cups, the third consecutively. It's a big... One's been truckloaded by any stretch. Renaissance Woman is the best back. Fireburn of the two is probably the one, given we went up $6 about Fireburn and, and Renaissance Woman was $3.60 at first. It's only 50 cents. I'd rather. Renaissance Woman tried to shift off the inside, but in some traffic. Then Tyresa, Presidium Arch, Super Chilled. A long way back, Irish Sally, Yankee Hustle. Fireburn looks as though she'll be written for luck. She's third last in the run in a packing field. Then came Noah and Adil and Super Chilled to the outside. Around the turn into the straight, Secure Girl. Heads for home in front. Where are the dangers? Because she's got a break of two lengths. Madame Odette premise run on. Renaissance woman starts to thunder down the outside. Where's Firebird? Getting through at the centre now. Secure a girl tackled by the big guns. Firebird and Renaissance woman. Look at Firebird. Look at Firebird. On target for the Oaks. Brilliant dress rehearsal performance. Wins the roses. Beats Renaissance woman and Secure a girl. Butters got it right. Then Yankee Helena. Irish Sally and Venetian Blue is the last one over the line in 2 3 44. Fist pump. That's the best ride I've seen today by a cricket pitch and a half. I loved being on Fireburn in the run. I loved the quiet ride. And guys, 
I'll go to you, Emma. But he's race and Yellow Brick was the best backed runner across the two venues that I'm covering today. First thing this morning, that has not changed by race time. Yellow Brick absolutely hammered here, occupying 50% of the hold. Hawaii Five O at four dollars is on the second line. Zoo Tiger is the one that punters just over eight hundred left to run it into assembly. Took it up, leads two to Zoo Tiger with a gun run second, and Ditto Hawaii Five O third. Fashion Legend fourth the outside trail by Atmosphere. Sandpaper three white Swiss Exile about seventh on the rail. Yellow Brick centre field in traffic. Then came Mumbai Jewel run right off the track. All the way soon say it turns the air. Then Lubrication Kiko. Seven Vales, Larrigan Rogue, and Cradle of Life, they thunder for home. End assembly led the way, but Zoo Tiger is the immediate challenger on the outside. Hawaii 5 a navigating to the clear. Yellow Brick right behind him, and then Fashion Legend and Swiss Exile. End assembly still in front. Hawaii 5 a trying hard. Zoo Tiger can't go on, and Yellow Brick is running out of time. End assembly in front. Hawaii 5 a went up at the lead. Yellow Brick charging now. Too late. Hawaii 5 0 straight broke bound. Beat home, Yellow Brick, end assembly. Not certain about fourth Swiss exile there. Not far away either was Sandpaper. Then suit over the line. So Gay's won it three times with Adrian a couple of times. It was a beautiful ride. He absolutely gunned at Nash, didn't he? He's a high-class horse. Yellow Brick was fantastic, I thought. But he doesn't get into the Stradbroke now. So it's a costly one for him. And end assembly hung on well. But we've got a Stradbroke player. And we know one thing, Lizzie. I spoke to her at the start of the carnival launch and I said, who's your Stradbroke horses? And he, she mentioned, oh, I've got Hawaii Five-0, I've got Converge. He's sort of my, you know, number one. But the improvement that this guy has made through each and every run is evident to how they've been placing him and training him. They have definitely found the key. The 146 of the Queensland Derby, it's got an incredible honour roll. It's got a million dollars and a beautiful trophy to go with all he picks himself, except for the 2,400 metres, but I'm sure he'll be fine. He's just brilliant. And you're questioning. In the race, a race. So the money is certainly on. Promises kept is on the second line at $8. Special sway at $12. And you guys alluded to it. I did just want to make mention on fame. So $51 the open. Bottomed out at $11, now $12. But in the boulder is last of all. The derby heads along the back straight. Half the journey completed. And the leader was Sacred Mission. By three quarters to White Tack in second. The Englishman dropped to the rail to be third. Special Sway still covering ground. Then came extra revs between runners as they go to the thousand. Promises kept lying in about sixth position. Now Kovalika, J Max on the way forward. He's making his move. Stroke of luck was next. Then cut on a dime. The Vowels, followed by Aberfeldy Boy. Well back Andalus. Then came Amalgamation. Tapple Doodle Doo. Smart Are We. Followed by a long way back. Subarctic. Second last coming down the side was Arby. And now famous Stone Motherless last. Heading towards the 600 metres, Sacred Mission being healed along. Leads from White Tag, racing third, the Englishman. He's had a good run. Then extra revs, followed by special sway, yielding ground, then stroke of luck. Kovalika now starts to close on the leaders and close on them pretty smartly as well. In the home straight, though, short of 400 left to run. Kovalika immediately took control of the derby and shot away. Look at Kovalika go. Promises Kip comes out of the ruck. Running on fairly down the outside was stroke of luck. But look at Kovalika. He's a mile in front with 100 metres left to go. Fame has made up many lengths getting to second. Stroke of luck third. But Kovalika, too good. The favourite wins the derby and wins it well. Beats home fame, stroke of luck. Fourth not certain. Have a look at Jay Mack there. Having a good long look back. It was oh so easy. The runner-up was an absolute eye-catcher as well. Yeah, unbelievable performance from Kovalika. But as you mentioned, it was an eye as you mentioned, it was an eye-catching performance from Fame as well, who was finding the line like nothing else in the field. But Kovalika has had a big boom on him for quite some time. And as Richo mentioned, a long time ago, this would have been in the plan of Chris Waller. And he was able to execute it, not perfectly, not to his liking, but to the way at the result that he got in the end. So great performance. A stroke of luck, I think. Yeah, because... It doesn't matter where you are in a race. They, they, they make their own luck. The good horses and um, and he did that really well. He, there wasn't a moment of. Hey, we've had ten different name changes this race. Can you believe it? <laughs> 
couple of beers, about three wines, you name it. Now we've got Kingston Smith, who's a distinguished aviator, of course. Oh, right, not a good horse. Okay. <laughs> See, so he is a fizzy horse. I mean, Joe's talked a lot about that. He's a he's a fizzy horse. He is. He's high energy. He's fizzy. I think there's been a bit of a worry about how he was going to parade. I've seen him parade like this. Ace of You was actually our favourite in this one, but... Think about it, it's managed to take that mantle back at $4.60. Occupies 30% of the hold, which outweighs its price, but I wouldn't say it's been a good, good go. A King of Sparta at $6.50 is not too many have found support. Paulelli, best of luck in potentially the final run. At last, at Paulelli has gone out of the tail. 800 left to run Eduardo. He's going to try and lead all the way, but Rothfire right at his face in second, although I'd suggest they've steady mid-race. Valana, three white, can't get in stuck. King of Sparta in a great spot, fourth the rail at Emerald Kingdom. Think about it, travelling up three wide with cover, a dangerous six at the turn, a case of you trying to navigate into the clear, then converge 11-11. A long way back was Shalo, Alpine Edge, Kerwin's Lane, a mile back, Palais, a bad gentleman, Roy and Paul Laley. In the straight, Rothfire charged to the front. Here comes, think about it. After Rothfire, who's got a decent kick, though. Rothfire, the leader. Slowly but surely, think about it, gets on terms. Rothfire, the inside. Think about it, the outside. Think about it, race to the lead. Flashing open on the inside, converge. Think about it in front and one. Think about it, one for Kingston Smith. From a flashing converge, Rothfire and King of Sparta. Followed then by Shalo Levin and uh, Eduardo. And not finishing the track, Palais Pan. Well, he keeps the picket fence going. He's just a fantastic horse. They raise the bar. That man raises the bar. He's the man behind him, Joe Fry, and he responds. It was a good win. win. Gee, it was a good win, and he drops to 54 kilos in the Stradbroke. He's got to be sure. Converge good. He keeps his Stradbroke hopes alive. Rothfire runs third, fourth last year, and King of Sparta, probably not the... I think if there was more speed in the race, you would have seen him finish a lot closer. He didn't have the best of runs. But it's all about how you make the lucky <laughs> running, isn't it? And think about it. He can sit three wide with cover. He can kick off in a slow tempo for fast tempo. He's got so many bits of armoury and he's able to use them and utilize them. And that's all about it was always around that 450 mark. So he's only come in a point. And Hawaii Five O has cemented himself. He's now in the Stradbroke. So he wasn't even in the field before, but there was. Look at the Channel 7 Queensland Oaks starting in the early 1950s. Everyone wants to win an Oaks and in Boston. Philly's classic was taken out by Ethereal, who in the same year claimed the Caulfield and Melbourne Cup double. And look at this Ethereal from the tail of the field, by golly. Oh, Ethereals come from nowhere. Chris back-to-back -back wins and was still yet to claim a Group 1 scalp. And Winks has raced to the lead from Imperial Lass Ungrateful Allen. And this is a monstrous win in the Oaks. Winks sees down three links Ungrateful Allen. And that is... Horse before. Um, we get to watch your replays and, you know, something I've done over a long period of time throughout my career. It is always an advantage if you have ridden them before, but you get a, a good guide on them watching their replays and also a short... Ollie, this would be something, Richard. Oh, wouldn't it? Uh, so can Ollie uh, win another Group 1 and go to 128 with his great mate, Chris Lees? They've had a wonderful association. Chris offered him the ride. Uh, Ollie went and had a look at the form. What's that mantle? But there's not too much between... That horse and a fair a swive. Now, that's a $4 second elect, but it is the best. Presenia March at $9, Amacura at $9, Secura Girl at $11, and then Super Chilled at $14. Win dollar. Mar Eustace Runner looking for four straight that is the best backed runner in the race. Out of the back to the side, 900 left to run. Queensland Oaks, 2023, and Let Me Ray calls the shots. But Secura Girl is nice and dangerous. Now a half a length in the rears are at the half mile. Super Chill third, Divine Purpose fourth. Both have had good runs. Likewise for Chevelle Dor outside of Original Gaze. Then came No and a Deal, followed by Madame Oden. Presidium Arch in centre field about to make a move. Then Rio So Dazzling. A long way back was Abakirin in the rail, ridden defensively by Oliver. Trying to make ground of Ferris Weaver to lay off them. Renaissance woman behind it, then Yankee Hustle. Fireflies carrying Lass and Tyresa. In the straight below the 400 metres, at Secura Girl bound into a clear lead. Rio emerged from the ruck coming after the leader. Then Divine Purpose. No one a deal putting in. Amakura threading the needle. A fair sweep round Renaissance woman with work to do. Rio in front. Amakura the danger. Up in Amakura. 
and Ollie went for home. Abacura shooting clear. Rio can do no more, but it's Abacura's Oaks. One impressively. Dino Rio, no one a deal. Renaissance woman. Then a Ferris Weaver, followed by Yankee Hustle. It's woman behind it. Then Yankee Hustle. Fireflies carrying Lass and Tyresa. In the straight below the 400 metres. And Secure Girl bound into a clear lead. Rio emerging from the ruck, coming after the leader. Then Divine Purpose. No one a deal putting in. Abacura threading the needle. A Ferris Weaver and Renaissance woman with work to do. Rio in front. Abacura the danger. Up with Abacura. And Ollie went for home. Abacura shooting clear. Rio can do no more. But it's Abacura's Oaks. One impressively. Dino Rio. No one a deal. Renaissance woman. Then a Ferris Weaver. Followed by Yankee Hustle. So Chris Lees gets a second Queensland Oaks. And that's a big story. A 16th group one. But you know what? It's about the goat. It's about Ollie. It was the most brilliant ride by Damien. He had to shuffle a bit on the home turn and shuffle he did. And then he came with that mighty run on a filly that's got so much potential. And Ollie now goes to 128 group ones. He puts a space which was put on an absolute clinic there where he was back about fifth last. He drew barrier one. He weaved through the field with a filly by Kermadec, uh, the New Zealand bred Kermadec. And Amakura wins Ollie for uh, Chris. So look at him trucking up behind Rio. It's got really good margins on its fields in recent runs. And look at the ears pricked on the line. There's plenty more to offer when it comes to Amakura. So really special. And second, the way they planned this, Philip, they took her to the Sunshine Coast. She had to win that class one, Richard, to get enough money. And they thought, is she in? Now we're seeing a very promising staying filly here. It was, it's actually the old O'Shea stake. So that's what it is. It's a group two up. A name that maybe won't last forever. There's been Maybe they call it I for future horses coming to Australia. What a here. They have launched into this one five and a half times more than the second favourite. So without a fight, crunched $3.10. Numerian, a little on the easy side. I know the price has hovered around that $6 quote, but in terms of money... They're... Along the back straight, 1,100 left to run Serpentine with a full head of steamers going strongly up front and Colding, he's sticking with him. That margin now four or five to Lions Roar in third. No compromise in fourth and Lutzi's in fifth. Two to Dewis getting a great trip in midfield outside of Young Werther. Uberian was next inside of Banker's Choice. No moves because these leaders are going lickety split. Then came without a fight, Media Award, Wetor, Nonconformist and Fame. Down the side, 700 left to run. Serpentine and Colding are still a long way clear. And now there's 600 metres left to go. They're out by five to Lions Roar, pushed along. Then came Luncey's, followed by No Compromise. Dewis working into the picture. Followed then by Young Werther. Uberian getting on its bike. Then came to the outside, was Banker's Choice. Without a fight starts to wind up beyond the center of the track he starts to put in big strides and non-conformist was the widest runner it's still serpentine calling the shots at the q22 lot season here comes without a fight he's got wings without a fight raced up dashed away non-conformist emerging for the ruck then Lutzies, but mind about the only boys and girls, because without a fight, is awesome. He's down, won the Q22, and won it brilliantly from non-conformist Dewis and Lutzies. Then came Wetor, followed by, at the head of the others, fame, Banker's Choice, New Marion. Then... Well, Zaki, a couple of years ago, we always find one, don't we? There's going to be a major, major player. We've found one over shorter distances, but we've got a genuine wait for age horse that could compete, I think, at the very highest level in Melbourne and Sydney after what we've seen here today and a fortnight ago. Yeah, won't that uh, lunch date. Rock Rabbit, who in 1992 bumped 58 and a half kilos, making him the only horse in 30 years to carry more than 56 to victory. Rabbit's flying in the glass. Rough Rabbit proved that craft of evening from the straight road. What a performance, Rough Habit! In 1990. What a performance, Rough Habit! In 1997, Dame Ripper won the Strat. The same is the race has had high profile victors, including five time Group 1 winner Santa Anna Lane in 2018. Santa Anna Lane for the Strat, right? Santa. Third last year. 
this year, Queensland's favourite has to come from the extreme outside. Yeah, and 57 kilos. That makes it so tough. So it meets... Guy that I think they've all got to beat. He's Richo's on top selection as well. I had a look at him in the stalls, Bruce. He has definitely come on because his attitude and the way that he presented. But I was happy to see him. Enormous horse. But not only that, he's been an, an enormous horse. But not only that, he's been revitalised. Race day. This market's been open for months and punters have been jumping into different horses along the way. Think about it has been the most popular over the past three weeks or so. And that's certainly continued again today. But only occupies 28% of the hold. So I expected from $3. Think about it. A Cardinal Gem, Hawaii Five-O, and then Half Cabin. You win. There's nothing like this race in Queensland. You can't manufacture. We see great start of the Stradbroke. Scalopini flew out with Gentleman Roy. Roth fire out wide, coming across steadily in a Y50, settling in fourth. Not far away soon after the start was Palaza Pan, then Chain of Lightning. Followed by Cardinal Gem and TikTok Queen, then Surf Dancer. Think about it. Midfield and a bit deep, followed by Ruthless Dame. And, uh, and Gentleman Roy used Barry Wonderful Advantage. Leads Roth fire by three quarters. A Y50 sitting pretty in third. Scalopini fourth, Chain of Lightning. Fifth and exposed three wide. TikTok Queen sixth row, then Palaza Pan. Think about it, travelling three wide. White butt with cover. Valana right on his back, then Surf Dancer. Cardinal Gem in that bunch, and then came Superstorm, followed by Half Cabin. A long way back, Ruthless Dame and Royal Merchant with work to do. Then 11 11 converge, trying to thread the needle, and Holyfield turned in last. They're in the straight of the Stradbroke. Gentlemen, Roy Rothfire, a Y50 bursting between the pair. Chain of Lightning joining in, and here comes, think about it, descending down the centre of the track. Rothfire, the Queen's now to reach the lead. Think about it's got it. Is there anything coming from the back? Not at this stage. Think about it goes for home. Clip it up, riding high. You get boy. Think about it. The finger bundle stretchy. Big Rothfire. A wide 5 0. Ruthless Dame. Then Palaza Pan Chain of Lightfield turned in last. They're in the straight of the straight broke. Gentlemen, Roy Rothfire. A wide 5 0. Bursting between the pair. Chain of Lightning joining in. And here comes Think About It. Descending down the centre of the track. Rothfire, the Queen's now to reach the lead. Think about it's got it. Is there anything coming from the back? Not at this stage. Think about it goes for home. Clip it up, riding high. You got it, boy. Think about it. The finer bundle strategy. Big rough fire. A Y50. Ruthless dame. Then Palaza Pan Chain of Lightning. Followed by Converge. TikTok Queen. Half Cabin Valada. Then Royal Merchant Gentleman Roy. Cardinal over the line. The favourite. Yes. Wins the Stradbroke. It's getting bigger and better, isn't it? He's won seven consecutive races. He's got a couple of group ones to his name. That's a big winning margin for him, Lizzie. He doesn't put more than a length on too many. Rothfire was magnificent. He's now been placed into an Hawaii 5 runs a bottle. It's the perfect ending to the brilliant build-up. Lizzie, you've been well done, young lady. Uh, very proud of him. He's such an amazing horse. I mean, I actually was speaking to Jamie Walter about his story and where he's come from. And he actually had a tendon injury when he was a two-year-old and he was turned out for 12 months and they forgot about him. They said, you know what? Is he ever going to come back? And as soon as he came back into the stable, he spent some time at Emron Park. There was really positive signs there. What do I take out of that? Be patient with these horses. He never raced until he was a three-year-old. And then he's built up his career. And what they've been able to do, they're going to reap the rewards. He's now going to an Everest after going out a dual group one winner. And if they didn't go towards the Everest, I'm convinced that he'd be a mile a plus and he might even be a Cox Plate horse. Maybe that's for the following season because he's a son of So You Think. He is an incredible young horse. And Bruce, you summed it up. Cox Plate winners, when they stand at start, produce really good horses. Absolutely. And so you think, and you think of what's happened in Queensland over the last four weeks, giga kick and think it over, when we think to the spring and the Everest and all of those things. But for Joe Pride, he's a, he's a dual group one winner. He's the star of the Queensland winter. He's the numero uno. He's in the Everest right up to those beautiful ears of his. We're going to hear from